ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 198 for the week of August 29th, 2021. I'm Will, a.k.a. I am Mr. Mayhem. And today, I, I'm not joined. Will, I was right! I was right! The one and only time I was right, baby! I was right! The games are coming out in December, bitches! I was right! Woo! That's right! There's no way that game is coming out in fucking November! There's no way! I knew it! I knew it! It's not! It's December! Maddie, fuck you! I was right! I knew it! <laughs> Man. My name is Josh, JK, JK Fire, and I'm <laughs> fucking amped up, baby! <laughs> I think we can tell. Ooh. You made me set all that up for all that. Wow. All right. <sighs> Welcome, everybody. Josh had to get that out of his system. I hope you enjoyed it. I was planning that ever since it was announced. <laughs> From the moment it was announced, I was planning doing just that. And for the record, Will had no idea. Yeah, yeah, that was that was all him. <laughs> Will had no idea. Oh. Baja Pant, thank you for the follow. And Thank you very much. Yes. Welcome to the live show. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the live show. We're here live with you. And I was right. Will, do you want to know what's coming up on this week's episode of the show? We got a lot, man. So, we uh, do. Let's get into it. So you're right. Let's get into it. Uh, this is going to be a long show. Just a heads up. So strap in, um, you know, get excited. We got a lot of talk, a lot to talk about, a lot of good, some bad, um, yeah. So this week's episode's a, a fucking, it's a monster. But on it, we have the HCS partnered orgs have officially been announced for the launch of Halo Infinite Esports. Halo Infinite has an official release date. I was right. One step forward, two steps back with any type of information Halo Infinite brings. We're going to talk about that. And Call of Duty brings a new definition of roster mania. Uh, Holy guacamole did shit happen in the COD scene, Will, over the past, like, two or three days. Um, and even before that, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some shit. Um, Natana says, I didn't realize you're already starting. Uh, I was wondering what the yelling was. The yelling was, is that, fuck Maddie, I was right. Him and I had been, been in DMs for a while, and he was, tr he was, like, he was convinced that game was coming out in November. There are people online that were convinced that game's coming on the anniversary of Halo. Guess what? No, it wasn't. No. That's something against Maddie because I wish it was coming out in November. Trust me. I do. And all the people thinking it was coming out in the anniversary of that game. Maddie says, no, 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 no. Go back and read those conversations. You want me to go back and read all the conversations? Did you edit uh, the information in those conversations? <laughs> I swear to God, Maddie. Did you Maddie, do we got that? enough to do? Don't tell Josh to do more stuff. Maddie, did you go back and edit conversations that previously took place? Oh, he, he wasn't convinced. My apologies. He was he was thinking he wanted it to come out in November. I mean, uh, most of us would want it any time before December, but exactly, it is but what the it game's is. coming out in December. Guess it what? Is. Told you. <laughs> um, as soon as they said, uh, remember my math equation with the. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> oh my god we're, we're we're at the point where i mean they announced <clears throat> six games in six months and there was, I was no I, infinite game I said. and no december that's game what i said yep it was it was like the perfect shit storm of things happening that coupled with the delay that happened them at e3 saying there's no release date yet all the way up till gamescom and it's like what the fuck guys really so yeah there's no way the game came out and was coming out in november um so, let's get into some competitive news. Tony's looking for a coach. This is by Why Not Be Reckless on Twitter, and he states, any teams need a coach for who will hype you up and make breakfast? DMs are open. 
Well, breakfast. I was gonna say that's kind of the winner right there. Oh, oh, oh. fuck the coaching we, shit. We, I just want breakfast. Pancakes, waffles, what, what eggs, bacon. Sausage? I'm thinking waffles. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm making waffles. Yeah, it's in Shrek, right? Yeah. Donkey. I knew it was coming. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it cannot come. You know. Uh, Fatal Strike is also looking to coach. This is by Fatal Strike on Twitter, and I quote, With CDL Roster Mania going on right now and Halo Infinite releasing soon, I'm looking for an opportunity to coach um, and manage, if possible, a professional roster for the CDL or Halo Infinite. If your team is interested, the business email is joe.fatalstrike with a Y at gmail.com. All retweets are appreciated. Next up, the Sentinel social media game is on point. This is by Sentinels. They released a little video with uh, with uh, Frosty and Tens. Yeah. Uh, Frosty of the Halo Sentinels team, Tens of the Valorant uh, team. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And it was supposed to be like a cake that was being baked or like something being baked. And it was actually Master Chief's helmet yeah. in the oven. Just it's almost stuff. ready. Just it's waiting. almost ready. Um, then Ninja teases a return to competing. This is by <laughs> Ninja. And uh, yes, I included the picture the, the that he gear. included as well. Yes. Or the picture. Yep. Um. So he his in this tweet it says my replies are you going to go pro in Halo Infinite and then he he says it's a picture of Squidward licking a uh, popsicle. What so, the fuck does that mean? Now Squidward licking a fucking popsicle. Yeah, Squidward. Um, I don't. Does he? I don't think he does. I don't know. Ninja returned to competing. Right, like that's I don't know. It's tough because of the established careers he has right now. You would have to. I mean, up end that could, basically. He could stream, but then you got to take practice, scrim, tournament yeah. hours, all off of streaming, and that's right. all potential revenue. Pr- pr- yeah, potential revenue loss from subs, bits, whatever. Right. It may and be. what is what is his contract state for how much he has to or doesn't have to stream if there is anything in there in for for his contract? Right. Like yes. there's just a bunch of stuff to consider. I don't know. I do not know. But yeah, I thought I'd include that in there. What's up, Snagalicious? Yo. With the motherfucking primer as well. Thank you so much for the sub, Snagalicious. Greatly appreciated. Welcome. And you get a... Woo! There it is. We ain't done. Yo, uh, Beth, with the fucking 16-month yeah. resub. I'm upset right now. Why? My woo emote? Is it gone? It's a Dr. Lupo emote. Oh, shit. You ain't gonna have that no more. I got to use it while I got it. You got to use it while you got it. Yo, Beth, with a 16-month resub, strapped in and ready for a long one. That's what she said. Wow. Well, you also get a woo. Um, <laughs> Snags has been saving that bad boy so I can make it to a live show. Thank you so much. It's so yes. greatly appreciated. Holy shit. Thank you. Beth, you as well. Thank you for that 16-monther. God damn. Y'all are awesome. Also, we should say... This isn't a tease or anything because we've been saying this for a while, but we are now officially in talks to like getting emotes going on the channel. Yeah. yeah. So and if anyone out there has like emotes, they absolutely love from a certain artist, feel free to send them or send us information on them. Cause yeah. I've been taking a look at a lot of, there's a lot of options. I just don't know what, what to go with. What, yeah. What's, and I'm, I'm waiting for that one to like, like that's the one, that's what I need. So send artists our way, please. I do want to tease or, one thing. Yeah. So you know how there's tiered subscriptions, right? Yes. I'm not going to say what it's going to be, but I just want to tease that uh, this isn't to get you to spend more money, but I just want to throw it out there. Our tier three emote is going to be fucking incredible. (laughs) I cannot wait. Maybe we need our own woo emote. Maybe that's. Oh my God. We need our own woo emote. There we go. We were looking at it out. We needed one more. That's not the tier three, by the way. No, no, no. (laughs) Tier three is way cooler than that. I'll put it this way. In the doc. In the Google Doc, the show notes of the show? Not in the show notes of the show. <laughs> I just kidding. But in our own Google Docs. We do have multiple Google Docs. There's so many Google Docs. So fucking many <laughs> Google Docs. Um, next news story. Halo 3 tournament announcement. This is by Ambition Production. And uh, it is Halo 3 MLG from the Halo European series. It's a 2v2 MLG tournament on September 26th. Um, so, yeah. There's there's that. It's uh, more information is on their Twitter, obviously, and in the Europa Halo Discord server. Yo, Cruzina, thank you for the follow. They state, how was I not following before? Great fucking question. <laughs> I don't know, but now you are, and that's all that matters. So thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, absolutely, and thank you for all the uh, all the feedback on Twitter. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you. So thank you. 
Next up, the Europa Halo Europa Showdown. Team Onset versus Team Gaskin. This has been announced by Europa Halo. Ooh. It's a BTB show match featuring a lot of people in the community. So on Team Onset, you have SLG, Wonderboy, Ubernick, Echidna, Anferny, Savior, and Crazy Miller. And Onset, obviously, right? Yeah. And then on Team Gaskin, you have Gaskin, Jimbo, Batchford, Scherzies 1 and 2, <laughs> Outcast, Spiteful, and Mista. Off of those teams alone, who you got, Will? God, that Jimbo on Gaskin and Batchford, that's that's tough. But you have the but, king of BTB and Ubernick on Onset's team. Wonder Boy and SLG as well. Yeah. yeah. It's going to gonna be close. I think it's going to be close. This going to be a good matchup. Who do you got? Uh, just because uh, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a say Onset. I'm going to say Team Onset. I'm, I'm going to agree. Yeah. I'm going to agree. I'm going to go Onset on this. Part of me wants to disagree with you, but... I was thinking onset from the get go. Nothing against anybody on Gaskin's team, but I'm just saying. Did it say if this was H five? It has to be right. A show <clears throat> match like of this. Size? I think so. I would assume H five. Oh, I would hope so. Yo, Cruzina. My mom may not love me, but HGS Pro Talk does, and that's all that matters. <laughs> well, all right. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, and Brian. Rage more nerd. Happy belated 29th birthday, motherfucker. You also get a later shout out in the show, but I just want to give you that now. Also gifting a tier one sub to Matt Rums. Thank you so much for the gifted sub to Maddie Rums. And therefore Maddie and Brian, you guys both get a combined. Woo! <laughs> there it is, baby. Oh, that's our first ever hype train, isn't it? It was. I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I think it is. Look at that. I like, like oh, the wow. banner. It looks very nice. God, you guys are Look so cool. That. And Maddie says it's an H2 and H3 for the showdown. So we're fucking dumb. Yep. H2 and H3. There H2 you go. and H3. So there's that. Siri, I did not say your name. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. Next announcement. Blue Team Tournament's Road to Infinite FFA update. This is by Blue Team Tournament. This happened today, by the way. We have made a change with the Road to Infinite FFA series format. Originally, the winner from each FFA Cup championship moved on to the Halo Infinite $3,000 grand final. This has been changed to the top two players in each championship. With that being said, the players who are now eligible to move on to the Halo Infinite $3,000 grand final have been contacted. Here is the list of players that will fight for $3,000 in Halo Infinite. Trushkov and Clonely are not shown because they were the winners from Halo 3. We will talk about those later on in the show. So, those who have made it so far include King Nick, who knew? Porky J. LGD Hellboy, STK Fitty, Gunshot, Blitz, Evolving, and Bunny's Waddles, alongside Trushkov and Clonely as well. Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right, Will, you ready for the big boys? Woo! Here we go. The official partnered HCS orgs for the launch of Halo Infinite Esports are... Man, that was awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. That was just like, oh man, you were on the spot on that. I wasn't expecting that at all. I fucking love it. Cloud9, Envy, E United, E United. <laughs> From the COD days. Sure. Phase. I was hoping for like a phase up from you, but I didn't get anything. Nah. That's okay. Fanatic, G2 Esports, Navi. Sentinels and Space Station Gaming. So, with that in mind, let's get into the designing the Halo Esports ecosystem blog about my man Tashi. I almost said the other thing, but I didn't say the other thing. You get thing. two a year. I get two a year. You may hear one later. That's a that's a sneak. That's like a little tease right there. All right, launch partners. <laughs> Halo Infinite marks the next era in the franchise, and with it comes the next era for the Halo Championship Series. Behind the scenes, we've been hard at work for the last few years, building out the ecosystem with teams being a huge component of that. After getting tons of feedback on the partnership program, opening up applications, selecting the teams, building the in-game content, and signing contracts, we're finally ready to reveal the teams that will be partnered with us for the launch of HCS for Halo Infinite. 
We're so proud to have such an incredible lineup of teams ready to jump into Halo, and we can't wait to get to work. We want to thank each of these teams for believing in Halo and its community. Here's what gets us so excited about working with each of these teams. Cloud9. Their resume in esports speaks for itself. They're one of the few teams that have been around for a long time and have managed to stay at the top throughout it all. Cloud9 are longtime believers in Halo as they had a team at the very beginning of HCS with Halo 2 Anniversary. E-United. This organization is filled with Halo fans who are passionate about the scene and very knowledgeable as well. Their dedication to fan engagement and content is something we really admire and they and think they will be a force to reckon with in Halo Infinite. FaZe Clan. Probably my favorite statement here. Over a decade of excellence, culture-defying and defining, FaZe Clan simply don't miss. This, team's no, this team knows how to win. They know how to entertain. And we can't wait to see what they do in Halo Infinite. Actually, we're just hoping they can help us find out where Campy is. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, we all want to know where the fuck Campy is. So, if you're, if you're watching this or listening to this, I, I don't know. I hope you're doing okay, man. Really do. Miss your streams. Um, Fnatic. Another stalwart in esports and a very familiar face for Halo veterans, Fnatic once took the MLG Pro Circuit by storm and are back to reconnect with part of their roots with Halo Infinite. Their excellence in the industry is boundless. G2 Esports. Founded in 2015, G2 have built a reputation of competitive excellence and pure entertainment that will no doubt have a big impact on the Halo scene as well. G2 have a strong vision for esports, and we can't wait to see how they dazzle us in the arena. Navi. This legendary organization has been a dominant force in esports across multiple titles over the years, and now have the Halo scene in their crosshairs. Despite this being their first foray into Halo, we wouldn't take them lightly. Sentinels. Fielding Halo's current reigning dynasty, Sentinels have been supporting the Halo scene for nearly two years now. And we're very happy to welcome them into the partnership program as they take other on their next adventure in Halo Infinite. With their unique brand and knack for talking smack, we think they'll be turning some heads this holiday. Also, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think isn't hasn't their Twitter been like fucking going off on G2? Oh yeah. In Valorant right now? Mm, for Valorant? I'm yeah. not sure. I think it's G2. Maybe but yeah, they they're always tweeting, man. It's so always. funny. It's so funny the smack talk that they got. Space Station Gaming. This team knows how to win, and they also know how to have fun at the same time. With a proven track record in esports that continues to grow, Space Station Gaming are looking to spice up the Halo scene. You know what's funny? When I read SSG there, my in, I can't believe I'm saying this. My in, my immediate thought was Super Saiyan Goku. <laughs> that was like my literal, my immediate thought. I don't know why. Well, all right. Dude, I don't fuck it. Okay. Um. Because this isn't like SSG, SS is Super Saiyan, God Super Saiyan. I, dude, I've only watched like a little bit of, of like Dragon Ball Super or whatever the fuck it's called. And I, what is wrong with me? All right. And you just, you just minds on it. Like they said in their announcement, they're the underdogs, but I wouldn't sleep on this team. And then finally, Team Envy. Having won multiple Halo championships in Halo 5, Envy is back and have been fielding one of the scene's top rosters for the last year. The organization has grown significantly since their Halo 5 days, and we're thankful that they're bringing their prestige and power back for Halo Infinite. Maddie says, imagine this. It's December. Face puts out a video introducing their first new Halo content creator. It's Campy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> It'd be amazing considering his like Twitter is Face Campy, but he was yeah. never actually a part of Phase. It'd be amazing. That, be that'd nice. like be the ultimate full circle event is if he, man, yeah, that'd go down in the record books for something that happened in the Halo scene. Because if you think about it, there aren't like a lot of these new people coming up have no idea who Campy is. And so, and it, it, I'd just be, it'd be amazing. I'd love that. One um, thing I, I just, I love about this is I was introduced to all these teams in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, cloud nine CS go with shroud. United uh, from the COD scene, like you said. Space Station Gaming with Rainbow Six Siege. Yep, same thing with G2 for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I be believe as well as Navi. Uh, Sentinels, I first... I heard them when they came into Halo, but then saw them through Valorant. Uh -huh. So yeah, um, Envy was always, you know, Halo. That's yeah. the first, uh, first I saw them. So okay. good to see all these teams from different areas that are in different areas coming back or coming into Halo for the first time. Absolutely, and I love how it's like... A it's a mixture of old and new, which yeah. is fantastic. Um, 
the big thing to pay attention to. We're going to get to it in the Q and a section here. Oh, he was in phase. I didn't, I thought he actually wasn't. I didn't know he was legitimately in phase. I thought it was just a name. Yeah. Like the people just, just put phase in front of their name. Wow. That's crazy. Good for him. Then yeah, fucking he deserves to be a content creator for, <laughs> for them. If he decides to come back, who the fuck knows what he's doing right now. But, um, yeah, the big thing to pay attention there, and we'll get to it in the Q and a section here is that, uh, no LATAM and no Australia, New Zealand. So, and that'll be talked about shortly. So Q and a question, what do these teams get for being partnered with the HCS? What was, what were you, you, you skipped a, a couple parts here, a couple oh, bullet points. My bad. Thank you. Um, and I don't know if you want to hit on them all, but I, I figured the big one was mentioning, uh, Microsoft is a sponsored partner of cloud nine, which includes technical support of their teams, but this does not include the halo infinite team. So they're keeping that separate. So there's no, uh, Conflict of interest. That's the word I'm looking for. Good shit. Thank you. Um, Snag says, Miss Campy, such a great FFA player. Such a great FFA player, a montager, gr- just a great streamer as well. He's funny. Just, I mean, I got introduced to Trunks from him. I think I got introduced to Vetoed from him. So, yeah, shout out to them as well. Um, yeah, just missing Campy, man. Missing Campy. All right. Thank you, Will, for reading through that. Yeah. Q&A. What do these teams get for being partnered with the HCS? Well, these teams get, are investing significant funding into the Halo ecosystem, and we want to ensure that the Halo ecosystem can give back financially to them. They're going to be paying players, coach, manager salaries, creating entertainment content for fans to watch, and they'll even have the opportunity of setting up booths at our events to spend time with the community. None of the investment funding is going to us. It's all going to the community. Part of why these teams were selected was because they wanted to be a part of the Halo community for the long haul. Let's welcome them and their fans with open arms and support them as much as we can. In return for their investment, the partnership with teams starts with in-game content where they receive a significant share of the revenue. Each partner team will have multiple bundles released within Halo Infinite, which the, excuse me, which the prior bundle being placed into the vault as the next one releases. Okay. Oh, so so it's like limited time stuff. So it sounds like a like a CDL, um, obviously you have the team packs, but this kind of reminds me of what they did where they released a new champs pack for this year, which was different from the one last year, if I'm not mistaken. Gotcha. So this, this could be around those lines, right? Yeah. Maybe different variants on weapon coatings, armor coatings, whatever it may be, who knows? Um, yeah. Additionally, teams will be given a wealth of content and opportunities to film Teams will be given a wealth of content and opportunities to film content at events so they can entertain their fans and bring in new ones. We're also hard at work at more opportunities for partner teams, including sponsorship support, merchandise collaborations, and more. Our goal is to provide as many opportunities as possible to our partnered teams. Pretty fucking sweet. Uh, hi, Texas. I came across Campy pretty late in Halo 5, but I binged so many of these YouTube videos since. Would definitely love to see him make a comeback. And then she says, take all my money. I agree. They're going to be taking all mine too. Which team stuff are you buying first? Sentinels and Envy at the same time. Those would be the two that I buy immediately. I really like the Cloud9 light blue. Sure. Looks phenomenal. And then, yeah, I think I got to go Envy as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been, we've been NB supporters. I mean, we try to be, we try to be as unbiased as possible in terms of every team, but like in terms of like a team that we followed. I I feel like I followed envy though, just because of Pistola, uh, Pistola and Saiyan at the time. Yeah. And they're both on that roster. So it works out. Yep. They're there again. Let's go. I also love space stations logo. Yeah. The little moon man guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that'd be really cool. Like if it was like a, like a black and gold type variant, we'll have to wait and see what's what's coming out, what these skins are going to be. And if it's any indication, I didn't include it in the show notes, but, uh, Tashi, uh, I forgot who on Sentinels tweeted it out, but they're like, really hope like the weapon skins for Sentinels look amazing or whatever. And Tashi replied with, they do. Yeah. Or something along those lines. So that's really fucking cool. Um, Justin says, depends on what players I latch on to. Absolutely. Um, Beth says, let's be real. I'm buying them all. You know, what's funny. Yeah. I didn't want to say that, but like, yeah, I had to be like, which ones you get in first, you know, like what's right. your top priority ones. But I feel yeah, like I'm probably get them all. I feel like I don't want to miss out because part of this is sound dumb. But this like is part what, of me, I, I kind of what uh snag is saying here, not getting the, all the teams back in H five because they, 
They got rid of them. The, Literally, yeah, the optic yes. One's not there. The rest of the teams, it's all, it's all gone. Yes, I, I, I was going to say that the optic one. That's as much as I'm not the biggest fan of optic. Just the fact that you can't get it anymore. Like it's that type of shit. FOMO, man. FOMO. That's what Snag just said. <laughs> yep, Snag. We're all in the same Whoa, fucking wavelength right, right, right there, now. It's right crazy. There. God, I love this. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like if 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 we want to, it's if we. Like we're gonna try to support the scene as much as we possibly can, and uh, it just sounds like a lot of money. Um, <laughs> next question: Will partner teams have any competitive advantage over other teams? Answer: No. Uh, and in the words of me and not Tashi, fuck no. So none of these partner teams will receive any HCS points, any advanced placement at events, or auto qualification to any official HCS events that impact the roadmap that the entire other scene will compete in. This was super important to us. We're an open ecosystem. We'll have plenty of open events where anyone can compete and win. You might find, however, that these partner teams get selected for invitationals, show matches, and things along those lines where entertainment is the real goal, and those won't have an impact on the main HCS league or competitive standings. Question. Will there be more teams added to the partnership program after launch? If so, when will that happen? Answer. The short answer is yes. The long answer is that's really important to us that these initial... Uh, that these nine initial teams have a great experience and we're hitting our goals as we go, go along before we end up bringing on more teams. We want to avoid a situation where we scale up too fast and we're unable to support and manage them properly. We're in this for the long haul and so are our partners. We want to slowly add in more teams as we go along. Um, Beth says, exactly. And also with team changes, there's always a possibility that the player I like changes teams and want to be uh, sure to have those skins too. I mean, hey, if infinite roster mania is anything like what we're witnessing right now at the end of the call of duty season, holy fuckaronies. Are we in for a, Oh, it's going to be insane. Um, question. I'm a team that's interested in joining the partnership program at some point in the future. What can I be doing to set myself up for success? Answer. Great question. While these are the nine partner teams for launch, it's important to keep in mind that we are an open ecosystem. We welcome all teams around the world to jump in and participate if they choose to. In fact, we've already been taking, uh, we've been already talking to quite a few teams that are looking to jump in despite not being in the partnership program, which we're very thankful for. When we review applications for the partnership program, we're looking for teams that have a proven track record of supporting rosters in other games or even Halo, and they really sink their teeth into those games to engage with the community and support their players. Additionally, we look at the social media and content strategy. It's important to us that partner teams are pushing the story of the league and scene forward and are committed to entertaining their fans while drawing in new ones. If a team is also invested in signing Halo content creators, that signals to us that they're serious about the Halo scene and supporting it. Finally, it's important to us that teams are not just in it to make a quick buck off of selling in-game content, but are investing appropriately into Halo to support the community and are looking to do so for years. Hell yeah. What's up, hero? Welcome to the live show. Question. Tashi, what about teams supporting Australia and New Zealand, as well as Latin America? Answer. Over time, it's important to us that we also add teams from, other, from those regions um, into the partnership program to extend the support there. For launch, we made the decision to stick to North America and Europe for partner teams as those regions are more established and developed in Halo, as well as the reasons in the prior answer above. And we feel we will provide more potential success and opportunities for teams to invest significantly. In the first year for Halo Infinite Esports in Australia, New Zealand, and Latin America, we believe we need to first establish a strong foundation for players to commit to competing in Halo and really investing their time. The scenes need to grow deep, deeper and with more players competing and performing at a high level globally. This is part of why it's so crucial for us to commit to having the full year roadmap available for players to see at launch and why our regional approach has been bolstered, which we will share more about later. Having a full year roadmap available for players to see at launch. So it sounds like that's still going. Final question. We want to support these partner teams. What can we do? Answer. There's many ways that you can support the partner teams now and in the future. When Halo Infinite is released, purchasing their in-game content will really go a long way and they'll receive a significant portion of the revenue and is a key part of the program. On social media, you can be active by liking, sharing, and responding to their posts. They participate in games other, Halo, other than Halo, but let's make their Halo fans the most hardcore and passionate. 
Additionally, you can support the players that they field by watching their streams, supporting on social media as well, etc. And conclusion. We're truly humbled by all the love that Halo Infinite has been shown so far by the players, fans, and partners. Thank you a million times. Our next adventure in Halo is just around the corner, and we'll have many more exciting things to share, including tournament and event information, competitive settings, and much more. Let's keep the positivity rolling. Feel free to drop me a line on Twitter. Until next time, Tashi. Whew! Well, that's it for the competitive news. Your upcoming tournaments are the way presented by NoobCombo.com! Check out NoobCombo.com for early Halo eSports needs! Uh, but no merch. On Thursday, September 2nd, we have the Europa Halo Europa Showdown! Team Onset versus Team Gaskin taking place on Saturday, September 4th. We have the Pen Halo $1,000 Halo 3 free for all taking place. And then on Sunday, September 5th, we have the Halo Australia Halo 3 4v4 draft tournament. The Blue Team Tournament's Rainbow Road FFA Series Halo 4 qualified number one. And a return of the Esports Arena Halo 5 4v4. They're back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for your upcoming turns of the week presented by noobcombo.com will check out noobcombo I was expecting you to look at me <laughs> presented by noobcombo.com check out noobcombo.com really is no merch okay will what do we got next roster media yes uh i feel like most of these teams were already announced before before this but we'll run through them anyway do it up. I guess the big roster change, uh, Kansas City Pioneers. So, so far, it's Soul Snipe, Druck, Tolik. Super CC is in. Manny is out. And then uh, he put out on Twitter, sucks the way things worked out, but shout-outs to Pioneers for everything they have done for me and on to the next chapter. So, we'll see what that change brings. Uh, we'll see where Manny lands and what's, uh, what's next for Kansas City Pioneers, KCP. Indeed. All right, your Cloud9 roster is going to be Penguin, Eco, Stellar, and Renegade. Sentinels, if you don't know by now, it's Snakebite, Royal 2, Frosty, and Lethal. They haven't been around very long, have they? They're just, you know, just popping in. Who are they? You know, yeah, yeah, uh, these guys. Who's, they, 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 they really have to prove themselves in Infinite, you know? Who's <laughs> Latool? Latool. Who's that? I never heard of that guy before. All right, moving on to Envy. We have Pistola, Trippy, APG, and Lucid, the player formerly known as Saiyan. E United is going to be Spartan, his arch rival, nemesis, <laughs> Ryan Noob, teaming up. <laughs> Hugs have been shared behind the scenes. Did handshakes. You see, did you see the tweet? No. Oh my God. Fucking Spartan got the clip from 2018, I think it was. Where they were yelling when, at each other? When Ryan Noob like, called his ass out. And, he's, and he said, so, like, oh my God. I, I'll find it. You keep going. I'll find it. It's so funny. Holy Spartan, Rye Noob, King Nick, and Rain. King Nyak. Nyak. <laughs> That's what it's... King Nyak gonna be competing. <laughs> God damn. King Nyak. N- I'm Nick. He's the, the winner of multiple FFA tournaments. The King Nyak. <laughs> oh my God, I'm fucking dying over here. Holy what, what shit. What do you got for the tweet? Here? I got to find it. Hold All on. right. Hold on. I'm trying Hurry to your ass it. up. Jesus Christ. Cool it. I'm getting hungry. Should have ate before the show. You fuck. You fucking should have. Why I, didn't you? I don't know. What are you doing? I was like driving over. I'm like, ah, I'm not that hungry. I can make it. But now, now, now it's setting in. Oh, here we go. So MLG put out a tweet July 15, 2018. And it says shots fired. Uh, and then Ryan who said Spartan got luck, got lucky, got overrated. Okay. Huh. Fucking Spartan retweeted that tweet today. It says, hey, man, fuck you, right? <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. So fucking funny, dude. Oh, it's the, one of the best things ever. Well, I, I swear, the fact that he retweeted a tweet from 2018 just to, like, stoke that. It's so good. Oh, my God. That team is going to be an underrated threat. Hey, I hope so, man. 
I hope so, Justin. I really do. Because I, I just, yeah, it's just fucking awesome. This is that they're yeah. fucking teaming. I, no one, I don't know. It's crazy. We'll see how it goes. Um, the one thing I wanted to say before we continue on, Will, yeah, um, is that there are a couple other rosters that don't have uh, organizations yet that we know of. Um, one of which nice. is Ace's team. So you have Ace, Bound, Boo Boo and Falcated. Okay. Okay. You have Cartel, if they stay together. I tried looking and I wasn't, I don't think I was able to find anything quick, like quick enough. Um, like I went through SLG's timeline. I went through Jimbo's timeline, but regardless, that would be, if they stuck together, that would be either SLG or Jimbo mm-hmm. and then legend Sika and shady. Yes. Okay. So that would be an EU roster, obviously. Um, and then the other one that we have that's kind of recent is commons team, which was common swish its name and Haynes. So I don't know. Obviously aces team has to be picked up by somebody. You would, you would think so. Right. With the amount of talent that's there. Bound for uh, first time on land, they'd be wearing robot fucking helmets and yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're Daft Punk, Daft Punking it up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I I, uh, I don't know. I could see them being so. Immediately, my thought is because uh, um, Elamite, who works for Space Station Gaming, put out that like I think he said that he'd be coaching and managing the team that got that got fielded for space station. So okay. obviously part of me thinks ace, his brother would fit that. They would fit right. Or, but uh, he might not have control over who they pick up. Right. That does. That seems a bit of to conflict of interest. To right. No, I, I understand it just, it, to me, it was one of those, like I could see this happening just because of the relationship that they have. Uh, otherwise I could see them being a phase team. Um, phase likes personalities, right? Yeah. I could see, I mean, depending upon how Bound does outside of online, and then we already know that Boo Boo can be a, a pretty big personality as well. Like, all the Boo Boo take my Doo Boos. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, that could be a really cool thing at land, too. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, Justin says, Ryan Uba's great support player. Spartan can slay like a machine when he's hot, and King Nick clearly has a filthy shot. Can't remember their fourth. Rain. Yes, Rain. Timmy Tinkler. All right, I feel I feel so bad for that man. <laughs> I love uh, I love Rain. I just feel I just feel bad that name. Are we ready to move on? This rolls off the tongue. Yes, we're ready to move on. Will all right? Tournament league recaps of the week of the week. Yes, we had the Europa Halo just clip it results in third place. Looney second. Strafies Strafies. Yeah. yeah, you got it. And first went to Serial Vega. Nice. SWAT Nation won Flash to rule them all. Results, eighth place, Shabby Dagger, Melariah, and Jay the Caster. Seventh, Sensei Logic, Clutch Domes, and I Respective. Sixth went to Raised Wolf, and some numbers I'm not going to read. <laughs> Delicacy, and then a Visceral. I was wondering if you were going to read the numbers or not, because you paused, and I'm like, wait, are we doing this? <laughs> In fifth place, uh, is that B Pog? B P B W. I like the first one. I like the first one. I think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nafberger and could code cootie. <laughs> it's a cootie man. Oh, <laughs> fix it. Uh, fourth place. Uh, Lexa Prolis. Lexa Prolite. Am I not? Reading no, I think that? you got it. Yeah. Uh, isn't there, isn't there like a drug called Lexapro? I have no idea. Or something. I'm going to look uh, that up. That also includes, uh, I'm caps and drip, drip, double. Third went to loving the lag. NSG cereal and fob. Second, Smokey Dig, uh, Daedric and Snipedaneous, and first went to Apollo Nine, Nap Times, and Requiem. There were jokes on the tweet that it was rigged because Nap Times won. Yeah, um, I bet. Uh, Lexapro can treat depression and generalized anxiety disorder. Ah, so it is. A, I had a feeling it was a drug. Got it. Yeah. And also, uh, for, for all the folks out there, I apologize for not including the SWAT Nation Flash tournaments because the, the problem with them, and they're great for the community, obviously, but the problem with them is that they're Flash tournaments. So, like, they happen, they get announced and happen the same night. So, it's like it, to me, trying to keep up with that shit is really hard. Now, granted, 
I don't really have that much of an excuse because they updated their website and they include all these tournaments there too. So, all right. Shout out to SWAT Nation. Trying to get back on those. SWAT! <laughs> Next up, M2K fight for, it looks like Ibuda. Yeah. Junior. Halo CE. 4v4. It was a charity tournament. Remember the community's uh, child got cancer? They put on this tournament. So, fourth place went to Locke, third, Fizzy, second. I think it's, is it Stick Fitty or is it STK Fitty? STK, shoot to kill. Uh, I like Stick Fitty. Uh, first went to. <laughs> It is no longer shoot to kill. It is now stick. Stick fitty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just. Uh, and first, uh, is it Shun Tzu? There you go. There you go. Next up, blue team tournaments, Rainbow Road FFA Series, Halo 3 Championship. Um, this is where the two members Josh mentioned before came in. So in fourth place, we had, is it Clonely? Third went to King Nick. Well, surprise, he's in the top three. Second went to Trushkov. And first went to Porky J. <laughs> surprise, in the top three. He's just been, he's been everywhere. with. Oh, it. I know. Dude's insane. The dude's absolutely insane. He's doing well. But that's all I got. Okay. So we would have our topic here, but our topic relates to the news. So we're going to do regular news first and then the topic. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Because like it, it hits a lot of news here. Well, it's because it's almost all one fucking blog post, which I trimmed. Thank you uh, a lot. Okay. You can take my word for it. I trimmed the fucker a lot. I promise. Okay. Well, let's get into some regular news. <laughs> MCC development and flighting updates is my post. Um, welcome back to another MCC development and flighting update. This week, we're getting ready for our next MCC flight. Currently, the Season 8 flight is in Ring 1 and working its way towards the next public flight. Targeted for kickoff next week, if all goes well, which I think is this week, actually. We've already talked about a couple of the features planned for this flight in the past two weeks worth of updates, but today, let's take a look at what else players can expect to try out. Just in four-hour episode, let's strap in, baby! Will's like, fuck! Season 8 flight. We have quite a bit of content we're looking to gather feedback on. As with our previous flights, there's some items in this list that won't be releasing at Season 8, but are still areas of interest for the team as they continue to develop and iterate for the future. Here are some of the key offerings you can expect to see in there. Halo Reach Firefight update to include Firefight voice previews, more granular body type and voice. Halo 3 ODST Firefight to include per-wave customization options, bringing it up closer to Halo Reach's options. Thank God. Custom game browser for Halo CE and Halo 3, as well as Phase 2 implementations, which include updates to filters, search options, and overall improvements to the Create, Browse, and Session Details page. Halo Combat Evolved is seeing the return of the classic HUD with 4K support and a toggle in the settings. You get yourself a little candy bar. Oh, oh, you, you, oh. You getting angsty? Need a Snickers? A Snickers. Yeah. Snickers. <laughs> you, got, you got a lot of reading to do. I can, you, uh, you like nuts in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking hot gotti. weapons across all games in MCC. Season 8 customization content, which globally includes nameplates. Halo 3 content includes new armor, visors, back accessories, weapon and vehicle skins, and more. Sorry, Dave. No Halo 2 shit for you. If ever. Who the fuck knows? Is there a reason why I'm so quiet? I don't know. I don't know. What happened? What the fuck was that? It shouldn't have because you are on line two. I don't know. We're back? Well, yeah. See, my mic was off. You killed me, Will. What? Am I line two now? No, I, th- I should be. Yeah, see, I'm working. Yeah, I'm working just fine. Now I am. Yeah, they even said, there you go. So just don't mute yourself next Wait, time. When, um, 
Are we doing a real live audio test right now? No, we're good. I, I, I see what happened. What'd you do? The lines are, the lines are switched up front. What? Oh, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Did I do that? I did do that. My bad. I'm sorry. Fucking with my setup. <laughs> Just, I, you know, guys, it's my fault. All right. You just got him with the nuts joke and he muted you. <laughs> oh, Brian says, Josh, could you yell, yell, yell louder, please? Yell louder anyway. Louder! All right. I mean, if you want to learn about these MCC changes, you can go ahead and look at the Google Doc of the show. It's the show exclamation point show. It's in chat. You can scroll down a hefty amount, probably about halfway through the article, and you can find the link to this. You can go through them with me. How about that? Good. I'm going to continue. Halo Reach content includes new helmets because yay. All new. This is fucking weird. All new campaign collectibles in the Halo 3 campaign. What the fuck does that mean? What are they? Will, you have to know this. Halo 3 is your favorite Halo. How do you Sorry. not know this? So I got a mouthful of yeah, nuts it's over here. choking on the nuts. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? It's, oh, you're literally bringing down snacks for him? I already ate. Chips Ahoy cookies and or My wife is trying to fatten you up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. This episode's fucking weird. I set us oh, off the rails. This. I'm sorry. Uh, dude, we were off the rails since the beginning of the goddamn episode when I came in here screaming. Okay, we're, we're all right. We're all right. What are you drinking? Oh, you're drinking your... What am I energy drink? Yeah, your, your Zynergy or Zions? Yeah, Giants. Yeah. Not, not sponsored. But not hey. sponsors, not that. Get at us. Get at Jesus Christ. I drink a ton. I drink a shit ton of this stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, you do. I'm, I'm waiting for a G Fuel sponsorship for fuck's sake. It's zero carbs. Would we be their first podcast? Oh, maybe. If we got sponsored by G Fuel? Oh. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Other. To the other podcasts that are sponsored by G Fuel, go fuck yourself. <laughs> We're here. No, no, don't listen to him. <laughs> Justin, what fucking rails, Josh? This show's never been on the rails. We're just a runaway train always. It's a, it's a true statement. Rage, enjoy your bowling. Also, again, happy belated birthday. Chat, wish Rage War Nerd a happy belated birthday. He's 29 years old. Wish that man a happy birthday. Eric with the gifted sub to Natana. Th Jesus. Thank you. She's not even subbed to our channel. Damn it. Thank you for the gifted sub. You also get a woo. There it is. Hell yeah. All right. Um, Campaign customization for Halo CE and Halo 3 to allow vehicle and weapon skins when selecting options. That's pretty cool. File share now is now available for the PC platform with, abil uh, with ability to set trust levels for saving files, official friends and untrusted and an option to report inappropriate files. That's fucking awesome. Player reporting has been added to additional areas, including scoreboards post-match. That's fucking awesome. Accessibility features, including improved subtitles, subtitle size, color, shadow color, and background color, and all new color blindness options. That's fucking Awesome. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary has seen performance improvements in campaign and remastered visuals. Pretty awesome. A new map for Halo 3 called Icebox has been added, which is a remake of the classic Halo 2 map, Turf. That fucking sucks. And Steam account linking is now available on your player profile to see your Steam friends in-game, and that is fucking awesome. So yeah. Also, there was a screenshot in there that Flood Firefight is coming. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Heard about that. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Um, next news story. Halo Infinite Apparel Items by Halo Gear and Numskull. The celebration continues with the new Halo Anniversary Collection from Numskull Designs. You can pre-order now at numskull.com forward slash Halo dash merchandise. Check that out. I'm not a big fan of any of them. But hey, to each their own. You may like some shit on there. You know what I'm waiting for, though? What's that? Waiting for the Halo Infinite mouse pad, if that ever gets released on the official gear.xbox.com store. Did we get a Halo 5 mouse pad? We did not, because Halo not 5 was never... I mean, it is... PC. Oh, come PC. on. Technically on PC. So, in other words, they need a Halo 5 Forge mouse pad. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Or they should have the... Or they should have the... um, The... 
the, oh my God, the server app that they released. Just take the logo for that and put it on a mouse pad. <laughs> like, you wanted a Halo 5 mouse pad, fuckers. Eric says, wanted to give a sub to the channel for the nuts jokes, laughing at who it went to. Apologies all around. <laughs> hey, it's all good. It's pretty great, actually. I was pretty proud of myself there, too. Really good. <laughs> it's still stuck in your teeth. <laughs> a little snack for later. Right. I'm going to leave, okay, no! guys? You just enjoy the rest of the show. Start your Spartan journey on December 8th, a day before my birthday by 343 Industries. The road through 2021 has been an exciting one, Spartans. But here at the tail end of August, we're especially glad to see you. Throughout the last year, we've been doing our very best to keep you posted on all of our latest Halo Infinite developments, be it through the Inside Infinite blog series, the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, or, of course, the annual celebration of games out in Germany, Gamescom. We're thankful that so many of you have joined us on this journey, whether you just peeked your head into Halo Waypoint to take a look, or you're a full-fledged Halo insider that helped us test Halo Infinite during the technical preview, we couldn't be more humbled. That is why today... We're thrilled to announce that Halo Infinite will release on November, I mean, December 8th, 2021 for Xbox and PC. I was right. And homesick, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome to the live show. What a fucking treat you're in for. <laughs> Will's got nuts in his mouth. We're hey. talking about Halo. I eat a Snickers, please. And you got some Oreos and Chips Ahoy mini cookies there. Those might be a little too crunchy for the mic, though, you know. You think it's going to pick it up? There's only one way to find no, out. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Not to help. To, not trying to become one of those uh, ASMR channels. I mean, hey, it's a new avenue, you know. <laughs> yeah. This podcast is now ASMR only. Get out of here. <laughs> Stop it. Of course. Oh, wait, no, to help welcome you into the ranks, our very own Spartan commander, uh, Grinya, is here to help set the stage. It's a YouTube video. You can check it out. It's their introduction to the lore of the first multiplayer season of Halo Infinite. So you can go check that out. Um, Homesick says, and it's only Monday, guys. Hey, we got to set you up for success for the rest of the week. You know, Mondays are always like the worst day, right? Not here. It's the motherfucking best day. Of course, that's not all we're up to this week. Oh no. For the hardware inclined among for the hardware inclined among you, you we've got some brand new tools for you to check out. But guess what else? You can't order them anymore. Both of these will start shipping out on Halo's 20th anniversary, which is November 15th, and are available to pre-order right now. Except they're not because they're sold out. But what they are are an Xbox Series X Halo Infinite limited edition bundle, which comes with a limited edition console, controller, and a digital copy of the game. And then an Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 Halo Infinite Limited Edition, which is based off of Master Chief's iconic look. And that also comes with a gun buddy charm. So pretty neat. And it's a, it's a replica of the controller itself. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm afraid to look it up. <laughs> what was just posted in our chat? I dare you. If you don't, I will. How about that? Uh, Let's go, baby. All right. Some good things are not about to pop up. It's okay. Now dive into the full details below and prepare to request some days off. Mark your calendars. The coming months are going to be busy for all of us here at 343 as we march towards the December 8th launch. There's still lots to be done before we arrive in the cold clutches of December, but we couldn't be, excuse me, more excited to share it with each and every one of you. If you're as thrilled as we are, feel free to check out these locations to pre-order the Halo Infinite campaign so you can join us on day one. Xbox Game Pass, Microsoft Store, Xbox, and Windows PCs, and Steam. Will, what do you got for Mukbang? All right. A Mukbang, also known as an eating show, is an online auto audiovisual broadcast in which a host consumes various quantities of food while interacting with the audience. Yeah. It became popular in South Korea in 2010, and since then has become a global trend. So we got. So we're going to make a mukbang of just us eating nuts. I'm just going to I'm just going to sit here and eat for nuts. for hours. Nuts. <laughs> different types of nuts? Just diff all nuts. Cashews, peanuts, walnuts. <laughs> Beer nuts. <sighs> it's close. It's close to walking out. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, just kidding. 
Snag says, sounds significantly worse than it is. It absolutely does. It sound does. Worse it than does. It is. Also, Natana with the gifted sub to Mark owns your face, but he doesn't own my face. Natana, thank you for the gifted sub. Woo! The right equipment for the job. A Spartan's equipment is just as important as their skills, which is why we're doing our part to make sure you're fully equipped and ready to ship out. To help celebrate Halo's 20th anniversary, we're proud to unveil two items made in collaboration with our friends over at Xbox. The Xbox Series X Halo Infinite Limited Edition Bundle, the Xbox Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 Halo Infinite Limited Edition. As we kick off Gamescom 2021, we're proud to unveil the console. Featuring a limited edition Xbox Series X console, a limited edition Xbox Series X controller, and Halo Infinite downloadable after system setup, you'll be fully prepared to confront the most ruthless foe the Master Chief has ever faced. Um... It looks fucking rad. So go check that out. Maddie Rum says 24 hour stream of Patreon goal is hit all nuts all the time. We could call it the HTS pro talk goes nuts for halo infinite stream. <laughs> Why is this becoming a thing? Actually, we could call it the HTS pro talk goes nuts um, for halo infinite mukbang just to make it sound worse than it actually is. Right. Snag says, somehow managed to grab both of those at work. Super hyped. I was not able to get any of them. I didn't get the console, but I got the controller. Just don't tell Natana that, even though she's watching the show right now, so I apologize. Natana, just don't look up the price of the controller, okay? It's fine. (laughs) Yes. Snag, very lucky. Palshi, holy moly! Oh my god! What's up, Maine? Holy shit! Oh, I need a bunch of nuts associated alerts for the stream. Oh my God, I miss you. All nuts, including those of the D's variety. <laughs> ha, got him. <laughs> Can't you see? I don't, know, I don't remember what YouTuber it was, but the D's nuts guy was literally riding up and down his street on a scooter. Are you fucking kidding just, me? Just saying that over and over again, saying his catchphrase. It was hilarious. Lupo's D's nuts. Yeah. There you go. We'll steal his shit. There. God. This is not becoming a thing. We need to stop this now. We could eat so many nuts. <laughs> One would say that this stream has become quite nutty. Get it? <laughs> Inside Infinite for August 2021. That's why 3 for 3 Industries. This is where the fucking bullshit starts. Hey, yo, it's, Paul, it's she... not just bullshit though. Oh no, it's not all. It's not. It's not. The topic comes from the bullshit, but we'll get to that in a little bit. There's a lot of cool shit in here though. I want to get to, but first Paul, she with the tier one resub for two months. Thank you so much for the resub Paul. She, Woo! God damn it. You guys are so fucking nice to us tonight. This is great. I hope you guys are having a good time. And this show has been insane so far. So, Inside Infinite for August 2021 by 343 Industries. Tech preview review. These are some statistics from the technical preview that took place. Cool. First up, 519,914 hours spent in multiplayer. 65,342,411 total bots slayed. 1,346,687 total bot and 4v4 matches. 2,868,678 2,868,678 total weapon drills completed and 44,953 hours spent in weapon drills. That's a lot of info. Sam Hanshaw, Jerry Hook, and Tom French all sat down with us on stream to talk about some of what they saw, uh, what they were most excited for during the tech preview, speaking to flighting, overall design, and multiplayer respectively. We were able to re- revisit them here on the tail end of the preview to hear a bit more about what ex- uh, excited them the most what caught them off guard and any other tidbits that they were interested in circling back on. So again, if you want, I'm going to put an asterisk here on this entire segment. If you want to see everything within the article, go to the Google doc of the show notes of the show, exclamation point, show notes in chat, find the link, go to there, read through the whole thing. This is not the whole thing. I took out bits and pieces, but it's really a lot of it, but I, I took out, I took what is most relevant to the show included in the article. Here we go. So this is really the moment where you should strap in, make sure you have a drink, make sure you got your bowl of nuts sitting next to you, munch on those, and uh, let's get to it. 
From your perspective as head of design and someone working closely with the live and customization teams, what's your take on the first tech preview? How'd it go? And were there any particular surprises or unexpected outcomes? Uh, Justin says, Will and Josh, controls. Closer to Halo 3 or Halo 5? Trying to get my controls down before Infinite. I It felt like a mixture of the two. The technical preview? Was, was the stick to zoom again or was that still... Yeah. Or was that still like trigger, left trigger? I mean, I, I bet it depends on the control scheme that you use, but to default, it's clicking the stick to zoom in. I, I would say, it. yeah, Snag says both as well. It, it feels, it honest to God, felt like a happy medium between the two. It's not as fast as Halo 5. It's not as slow as Halo 3. Like, it, it literally feels like the, the perfect happy medium between the two. So, I'd say that. And like... I play bumper, I play bumper jumper and I don't use paddles on my elite. So I just stick with the control scheme that I use. So uh, I don't like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not in a kerfuffle with trying to manage like thrust sprint, um, Spartan charge ground pound when you're playing those playlists, whatever it is, it just feels like a happy medium between the two. So that's the best I can give you. So Jerry Hook says, it was great to hear and see the excitement over the over our first taste of customization content being shown in the technical preview. The love our, for our prosthetics, the investments for players to customize their Spartans look, and our new personal AI system seem to have landed very positively with our players. So it's always great to hear a call for more at this early stage of the game, even before we release. Also, I saw lots of love for being able to earn items outside the battle pass, since earned gear is not just focused on one track or activity. We did have some issues, however, with our challenge system in the tech preview, so I want to make sure to clarify some of those details. First off, I want to correct my own language when discussing the Battle Pass all up. In our live stream, I stated that the Battle Pass system will always have free and paid rewards available at each tier. This statement is incorrect for our launch Battle Pass. Our goal is to still provide great value to our players for their time spent playing Halo, whether they choose to go the premium route by purchasing the Battle Pass or by unlocking the incremental uh, Battle Pass items that are available for free. So, while there isn't a free reward at every tier, there will be numerous free rewards to acquire across the entirety of the season's Battle Pass. And yes, we are still allowing you to keep your Battle Passes once the season is over. They will not expire. Our challenge system had some issues in the preview that hit a few players and prevented forward progress on their battle pass. Our first issue was that we failed to call the challenge decks of challenges that could not be completed with bot only matches. This caused players to get blocked behind these challenges and it is not our intent for launch. We also missed some tuning for our daily challenges that caused them not to refresh. This also caused players to get blocked as they would run out of daily challenges. Lastly, we just wanted everyone to remember that for the technical preview, we had expedited XP earn rates to help players get through the pass in a short window for the preview. Using challenges. This was, this was the first big area of contention. Using challenges. Our goal is that you will always be earning progress in your battle pass through playing and winning matches. This will allow you to always jump into a game of Halo and make progress on your goals. Better together. Now that you've had a chance to see and for some of you to play an early look at Halo Infinite's multiplayer, it's time to hear a bit more from the team building the backbone behind every experience in Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer experience. Back during our multiplayer reveal, we chatted with a few of these folks in the Halo Infinite multiplayer overview, but now seems like a fitting time to circle back and chat with them once more. When approaching Halo Infinite's multiplayer, what were some of your most crucial design pillars? Tom French states, there were three multiplayer wide pillars we established early in development that still hold really true to what we are today. The player Spartan is Halo Canon. We want players to feel invested in their Spartans, and part of that is making them be part of the bigger Halo universe. This led to the world wanting to feel more grounded to reduce gaminess without compromising gameplay. Extensibility at the core. Modes, systems, and everything we built for Infinite to be modular and expanded over the lifespan of the game. This enables us to uh, recontextualize parts of one game mode quickly to stand up new game mode uh, prototypes for future seasons. 
The long-term benefit is this also helps us extend this beyond our internal team and into our community development tools by exposing these various components through Forge and custom game settings to empower the community to build more content that feels more real alongside things built by our own team at 343. And finally, always onboarding. Playing online is intimidating for many and difficult to master. It was important for us to develop an evergreen on-ramp of features into online play that we refer to the Academy. Starting with a tutorial, players start their journey, joining the ranks as a Halo Spartan to learn the basic mechanics. Through additional features like weapon drills, training mode, and the player versus bot playlist, players always have fun and safe ways to practice and explore Infinite before they're ready to jump in boot first into matchmaking. I really, I know it was a glitch, but the the teabagging, the teabagging I get why it's not supposed to be in there because it was like uh, the bot would get stuck trying to go up a like ramp or something. Yeah. And it looked like they're teabagging when they weren't really supposed to. It's supposed to be non-toxic. Non-toxic. Andrew Witt states, The design pillars are different based on our two big experiences, Arena 4v4 and Big Team Battle 12v12. We created different pillars because we felt that they had design goals based on player expectations. For the purposes of this blog, we'll focus on the Arena, and we'll save Big Team Battle for next time. The design pillars for Arena are Fair Starts. Players start the match as equals with balanced gameplay mechanics. The lone wolf survives, but the pack thrives. Players can achieve individually through skill expressions, but the team with better coordination, communication, and reactivity will seize the most victories. Mastery equals mechanical depth plus tactical decision-making. A match with two teams of equal skill should be determined by the team's tactical decision-making as the game mode states uh, is altered by player action. Game mode clarity. The modes in Halo Infinite's arena communicate their game states efficiently and urgently to bolster the tactical decision-making required for a player's path to mastery over the arena experience. And finally, power is earned and impermanent. Scavenging pushes, uh, scavenging pushes teams to contest the acquisition of items within the Halo sandbox. Any item that can be earned can also be taken away through combat resolution, positioning, and tactical actions. Since then, the world has really had a chance to sink its teeth in every single frame of the gameplay they've come across. Did the community pick up on anything that surprised you? Andrew Witt states, I'm surprised at how fast the community found all the Halo references we've put into the experiences so far, and there's more. I also really enjoyed the players' reactions to the more flavorful lines from the personal AI that uh, plays when players do something particularly awesome. They, they were really cool. Like the variety that they have. Patrick Wren states, I was really surprised by how evenly distributed each personal AI was a favorite to someone. While I enjoy them all for different reasons, I had no idea how much each one would resonate, but it was great to see them all get love. And Alex Bean states, I had a blast watching the community happen upon new medals. We put a lot of work into a suite of medals that would complement the game sandbox by telling the player, yes, you just did that. It was great to see players discovering medals that highlighted new mechanics, off the rack, deadly catch, as well as classic maneuvers, ninja and 360. So with the Spartan Academy and bots being core features for Halo Infinite, how does that play into your multiplayer design philosophy? Does this open up any new opportunities? David Ellis states, From day one, a core axiom we've used for the Academy was to give players a safe space to learn how to Halo. After 20 years, there's a lot of institutional knowledge in the franchise that, for most experienced players, is second nature and doesn't require a second thought. We're focused on ensuring that all modes, tools, etc. we create will allow any players, regardless of experience, to hone their Halo skills. We were gratified to see the community response to the uh, slice of weapon drills in the recent tech preview and can't wait till players get the opportunity to explore more facets of the Academy in the future. Sarah Stern states, We don't see playing against bots as a separate experience for multiplayer, but rather a tool we can use to allow more people to have fun playing the game. We spent a lot of time working on making the bot experience feel like playing against players so that the skills you practice against bots are skills you can use in regular matchmaking. Sometimes you also just want a little more control over how your multiplayer experience goes. If you're new and trying to get the basics down or an experienced player who had a long day and doesn't want to fully lean forward, bots are there to give you more options for how you play multiplayer. So the reason I included that is I, I love that analogy of if you just had a fucking long ass day and you don't want to go against sweats online, and as they state, lean forward, you have other opportunities. I wonder if challenges extend to bots. 
That's what I'm wondering. That is what I'm wondering as well. And I thought that they hinted at that a little earlier on. Because now, in the previous section, right, they were talking about the technical, I mean, we're all, we're always talking about the technical preview here. Yeah. But one of the statements was made, our first issue is that we failed to call the challenge decks of challenges that could not be completed with bot only matches. Now, is that a statement as in, we just couldn't do this because of the bot match limitation that we had in the preview? Mm. Or is this something that, no, you're going to have challenges being able to be completed with bot matches because this is, this is trying to be an extension of the multiplayer experience. Yeah. Curious. Will, what's our freeze? We'll have to wait and see. Thank you. Could be a lot better. Could be a lot worse. As we're going to talk about. Um, Tom French states, bots originally started with the desire to give players something safe, to learn against and backfill players in matches. They're a core component to our Academy feature suite to support an evergreen way to, to onboard players into our gameplay. The Academy and playing our game modes is really just the beginning of what will be possible with them. Their presence affords us new tools to explore new game modes and UGC experiences not possible in previous Halo games. When creating a, cl- a cross-platform experience like Halo Infinite's multiplayer, what are some of the biggest design considerations and design challenges or balance challenges? Andrew Witt states, being cross-platform is super exciting for us in general. A particular challenge that we faced on the multiplayer team was around readability for new players in general. We looked at a lot of legacy designs and we tried to both modernize them as well as make them more accessible to new players without losing too much of their feel. An example of this is, that our in, uh, is in our game mode design. For modes, we tried to add an additional level of clarity about what players should do off the rip with personal AI kickoff lines that describe the mode in a concise manner. We've also added mode-specific scoreboards to many of our game modes in order to better explain game mode states to newcomers. This is the first time Halo has made completely unique scoreboards for modes, and we're excited to get some feedback on how they're functioning for our players when they see them in upcoming flights. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Maybe that'll... Maybe we'll get some added statistics there as well in the scoreboard and whatnot too. Could help from like broadcast standpoint for the HCS too. Pretty fucking cool. Expanding on the tried and true Halo experience seems like a mighty challenge to overcome. When looking at things like personal AI, how do you add extra things into the margins without encroaching on the existing multiplayer formula? Alex Bean states, we looked for opportunities to take existing features and give them a big Halo coat of paint. An example of this is with personal AI. Halo 5 had a voice in your head that talked about incoming power weapons and players have always captured zones and modes like strongholds by standing in them. But this is Halo, and you're a Spartan. Instead, a personal AI is now delivering that information and hacking zones, giving players their own Master Chief Cortana dynamic within multiplayer. Another example is our approach to the camera in multiplayer. Now, at match start or when you die, the camera transitions to and from your helmet instead of simply cutting, just as it does in the Halo Infinite campaign. And when you spectate a teammate driving a warthog, you'll see the camera mounted to the vehicle, much like a cutscene from Halo Reach. That's kind of nifty. We also wanted to take mechanics that were hidden knowledge or skills and surface them to the greater player base. Inspired by the dynamic weapon racks featured in the original Halo 2 teaser and later in the game's opening mission, all items, weapons, grenades, etc., now spawn from physical objects in the world, marking the location of the spawn and informing players of their remaining respawn time. Instead of only being able to call out three enemies top mid via voice chat, players can now mark those enemies and communicate the same information. Player feedback is a critical element of our process, and during the technical preview, we had a solid amount of it. What are some of the bigger items the multiplayer team is working on now as a result of that? Andrew Witt states, One area of focus for me lately has been on analyzing player sentiment around what we've been calling the combat sensor, or as everyone else has been calling it, radar. (laughs) Call it radar. We knew that the implementation we had for the tech preview was going to feel different, maybe even a little contentious, which is why we wanted to get feedback on it as soon as possible. We've heard all the feedback we wanted, and we have a new iteration that will be in the next tech preview, which will be more in line with players' expectations. I want to know what those expectations are because I thought it was okay. So I don't know. I Maybe I should dig deeper into that and figure out what the complaints were. Yeah. Um, 
it did it feel like the radar was shorter than before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I liked that. I, I, I felt I like, like that it a lot. was. Uh, it allowed for more player movement of the enemy team. Yes, and only if someone was like, "Oh shit, they're right in front of me," type thing. And I think I talked to Maddie about this when we were playing the flight, but uh, I felt that it was harder to discern whether or not an enemy was above or below you. So maybe oh, that sure. was something that was talked about. Yeah, but it's just that, like that but, should, sure. you should just you shouldn't get that information. I feel like it would be better just to know, hey, there's someone in front of me, but you don't know up or down. I, I smacked the mic. There, there it, it is. is. Once an episode. Once, uh, yeah. If they're just up or down, you. So my problem is, is that. Like for, from the competitive perspective, I don't think radar should be a thing. I've always said that. But from right. a social perspective, I think that the the height variance has been there since Reach in the radar. So I I, so? I mean, I, I'm just saying, like, I, I liked it. I liked it. Um, Mark says, my opinion is go back to the regular radar for casual and no radar and competitive. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex Bean states, while our metal animations weren't playing correctly in the tech preview, sentiment on metal visuals has been heard, and our UA team is investigating addressing some of that feedback. So it's good to know. It is. I was like bummed that I didn't see stuff in when I and they looked they looked bland when you got them. They didn't yeah. look anything. They didn't look that great. I'm sorry. Like for the people who worked on them, I know you did a great. I know you did a lot of hard work, and a lot of them are great, but they just look too samey. Um, Sarah Stern states. We identified a number of bot behaviors we wanted to improve coming out of the technical preview, but two areas of focus for us have been rebalancing our difficulty tuning and improving how well bots prioritize contesting powerful weapons on map. The difference between Spartan and ODST bots should feel like significant increase in difficulty, which wasn't a target we hit in the technical preview build. They also ran out of pack to all try to get the same weapon at once. (laughs) We're exploring solutions for getting them to spread out and search for weapon pickups without competing with one another. Good. (laughs) Good. I just remember on live fire. Uh, oh, they, they would, would just all, all go up the ramp. Yep. They would yeah. just all run and try to go toward, like, they took one simple path mm-hmm. up to top mid. And of course. Regardless of difficulty, they all went the same mm-hmm. way. It was just hilarious. You just nade over there off the start. Or uh, on um, recharge, they'd all go for camo or OS immediately. Yeah, they're all bottom the mid. They're yep. all bottom mid. Yep. So you know, good. Advantage and shoot, but. Exactly. Yeah. But good to hear that they're addressing that. What are some of your favorite parts of Halo Infinite's multiplayer? Anything that's caught you off guard personally? Patrick Wren states, I love how we built our system so we can really fine tune and expand each experience. We can have a very tightly tuned competitive experience and have a much more dynamic experience in BTB. It makes me excited for the future and what the community does with these systems and custom games. The reason why I included that one is because it kind of feels like another, another check towards the slip space engine and the systems that they're making in place to make things more configurable. Love hearing that more and more. All right. Speaking about bots, Will, I, yeah. this is funny. So bot watch. As bots continue to get their sea legs, what were some of the biggest difficulties to overcome? Uh, Bree states, one of the things people might not think about was one of the harder things to do, and that was getting the bots to show up in the game like players. They show up in the back button scoreboard, earn medals, have MMR, customizations, and so on. It's really common for game code to make a distinction between this is code that runs for players and this is code that runs for AI. With bots, we had this new thing that it is both of those. And we needed code to run from each of those contexts. It was a very long road to get them well integrated into the experience, and I think it's really paid off. Bots currently come in four flavors based off their inherent skill. Can you talk us through each and what the general differences and expectations are for each? Sarah Stern states, we'll have four bot difficulties at launch. Recruit, Marine, ODST, and Spartan. Each of the difficulties is loosely modeled after the different skill levels a player reaches as they get better at playing Halo. You can't really focus on how to strafe well if you're still learning how to throw a grenade. And we put similar limitations on what each difficulty can do. Recruit level bots are the least challenging experience. They know how to perform each combat action, but they don't react quickly in a firefight. Marine bots are like players who are comfortable playing Halo, but they haven't quite figured out the best way to strafe yet. ODST bots are competent players that react well to player movement and know how to use their equipment more aggressively. While this wasn't enabled in the technical preview build, we're experimenting with allowing Spartan bots to communicate with one another about certain gameplay events, such as location of enemy players. Oh, shit. Just think if they start pinging your ass. Yeah. Like, no, you don't know where I am, asshole. Oh, they're going to have wall hacks. 
It's constantly it's gonna it's be collapsing. Crazy, dude. It's going to be crazy. Uh, Eric says, as a casual player due to kids, learning maps via bot matches and a method to call out enemies without knowledge of knowing uh, known call out names on maps is wonderful. Seems they're going they're they're gearing toward the experience gap rather than just addressing skill gap via matchmaking. Absolutely. And in a previous blog post, I, they did mention that this is something that they've wanted to do forever. It's just they never had the opportunity to do so. Or maybe it just didn't line up with the designs of the game. So now that them being able to do this real with multiplayer being completely free to play, really bringing on a new a new slew of players, like I, I like you said, I think this is a great way to do this. I see, I see the future now. Tesla bots steal Halo Infinite multiplayer bots tech and destroy the world. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you see that uh yeah, Tesla is making their own human robot? Yeah, exactly. That's yep. fucking Tesla insane. Bot. Oh my god. And just think of their Spartan difficulty. Oh man. <laughs> They're gonna be collapsing on all of us. Oh man, be I robot in real life. Exactly. Holy moly. Um the intent is that if you work up through each of these difficulties and feel comfortable against Spartan bots, you'll be able to hold your own against players in regular matchmaking. We'll continue to iterate on the challenge and tuning of each difficulty as we get more player feedback. We may also introduce new levels of difficulty over time based on what players are interested in seeing from the bots. So while they certainly still had their quirks, how did the team get them to feel like actual players? Uh, Lana states, a big part of getting them to feel like actual players was the combat dance. Their combat movement is modeled after some very high skilled players in the studio. Lower difficulty bots focus on strafing. Medium difficulties can jump but won't crouch as often. Higher skilled bots can do both. Sarah's done a lot of tuning to get the balance feeling right, resulting in the bot combat dance, which we affectionately refer to as the razzle dazzle. <laughs> Ultimately though, a lot of that human feel comes down to little behaviors that are more subtle. When you try to disengage from a bot, they'll remember where they last saw you and try to hunt you down. I did see that in yeah. the preview. When they have the grapple shot, they'll look for openings to zip in for a melee attack, especially if they're holding a good close range weapon. Higher level bots will look for opportunities to back smack you if you're facing away from them. All those small details along with many others come together to make bots play dynamically and make decisions like humans do. Hollis states, bots will make different decisions depending on the situation they're in. This gives the impression that they're weighing the pros and cons of, for instance, continuing to fight or backing down just like a human would. This also makes them more difficult to predict. Bots will also use equipment in similar ways to a player. For example, they'll hold on to the overshield until they see a player to fight against. The bot names also make them feel like real people with distinct personalities. So this is funny. During the course of development, has an infinite bot ever done something unexpected that truly surprised you? Bree states, during the technical preview, a bot stole a needler I was about to pick up from a weapon locker with a grapple shot because they missed an attempt to grapple shot back smack with a gravity hammer. They then killed me with my needler. I went from being very impressed to very salty. <laughs> so that's fucking insane. Um, and last up, this is the final piece of the article that I wanted to include. It's the final portion of the article itself. Update from the flight deck. This is from uh, Joe Staten. And it states, I'm currently streaking through the lower stratosphere on a late night flight back to Seattle from Los Angeles, having just finished representing the great work of the whole Halo Infinite team on the Gamescom opening night live broadcast. It feels terrific to finally reveal our launch date, which we hope you enjoyed meeting Commander Agrinia, who you'll be getting to know much better as we start unspooling the season-to-season -season story of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Before boarding my flight, I had a chance to read some of the uh, commentary online, and I definitely hear the disappointment about not seeing campaign gameplay on the broadcast. So, I wanted to take this opportunity to, one, shed light on why we chose not to show campaign right now, and two, um, as sewage... Uh, sure... Your concerns? A suit. If it's just a sh I fucking swear to God. Uh, Make less intense. <laughs> or satisfy. It's satisfy. And satisfy your concerns about where campaign is at this point in your production process. Words are hard, you know? English. Joe, I get it, okay? But come on. You can dump things down for us a little bit, please. I just don't know how to properly say that Aswage. word. Aswage. Aswage? Aswage. It sounds French. Aswage. Inrish is hard. It is, Maddie. Fuck you. Um, Aswage. 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 It's like a Play it one more time. Aswage. 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 
It just it sounds like that. For, I mean, it sounds like the AU is being cut off. A swage. A swage. There you go. All right. <gasps> Fucking. What's the English? English isn't a language. It's three languages wearing a trench coat. Pretending to be a language. Oh, fuck like if that. I know. So I wanted to take this opportunity to, one, shed light on why we chose not to show campaign right now, and two, assuage your concerns about where campaign is at this point in the production process. <laughs> As I mentioned in last week's development update, the whole Halo Infinite team is in shutdown mode. This means we're done with feature work and focused on crushing high-priority bugs. We're spending lots of the time playing the game, verifying fixes, and generally doing all we can to ensure campaign and multiplayer plays great on all platforms from an original eight-year-old Xbox One to a brand new Ultra Spec PC. This is a very challenging task, even for a large and experienced team. In many ways, shutting down a game is like being on, fi- on a final approach to landing an airplane. And if you forgive a bit of aviation geekery, the entirety of the team is essentially in a sterile cockpit. <laughs> Which is to say, we're at a critical phase in the flight that is Halo Infinite, so it's extremely important to avoid distractions and stay focused on mission-critical tasks only. For campaign, that means putting maximum effort into ensuring the open, uh, wide-open, adventure-filled experience you'll all get to play on December 8th is, a great, is as great as it can possibly be. And gameplay demos and trailers not only take a huge amount of effort to do well, they also take cycles away from bugs and other shutdown tasks. I would like to share, however, that right before I left for Los Angeles, I had to pause a full playthrough of campaign that I started late last week. I'm going for a 100% run, which means completing all primary and secondary missions, finding all the collectibles, etc. I played Infinite's campaign multiple times, but every time I do, I always find something new tucked away on Zeta Halo. Sometimes these are quiet little bits of environmental storytelling, such as an abandoned but desperately defended marine recon post, high on a lonely mountainside. Fortunately, the banished... Uh, missed the fully loaded uh, S7 sniper rifle that the Marines left behind. Sometimes these are combat encounters with deviously polished scripting. For example, a UNSC forward operating base that seemed abandoned, until I heard the laughter and taunts of multiple energy sword wielding and cloaked elites as I stumbled into their trap. I hope all of you take comfort from the fact that honestly I can't wait to get back home, fire up the build, and continue on that campaign. No matter how many times I play, Halo Infinite remains fundamentally super fun to play. And we're very eager to share all the fun with you through captured gameplay, trailers, and other content once we get this plane safely on the ground. But for now, it's focus time in the cockpit as we stick the landing. Please keep those seatbelts fastened, and thank you for your patience and support. From Joseph Statton, head of creative for Halo Infinite. Well, that's it for the regular news. It's time for the topic of the show, which is some maybe some bullshit. Halo Infinite XP rewards and battle pass progression. Let's get into it for the folks in the chat. If you're hanging out with us still, I uh, thank you for bearing with us as we got through that article. And if you want to chime in with your thoughts on this predicament that is going on here, then uh, please do in the chat. We'll read the comments. So... First up, hit the button, Will. Our man. Unishek. Said on Twitter in a reply to Ubernick, which I think he deleted the previous tweet. But regardless, uh, Uni's reply was, Hey, Nick, playing and winning matches will be challenges, which will help players progress through the battle pass. Even though this means no per match XP at launch, you're still always progressing through challenges and therefore the battle pass. We'll update the blog to clarify. Ubernick replied with. Matt. Well, Maddie says, I don't know why, but I thought Josh was going to say, if you want to chime in with your thoughts, go find someone who cares. Wow, Maddie. I'm glad you think so highly of me. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks, Maddie. Just because you were wrong about the release date and I wasn't. Oh, we're still still on that. Oh, yeah. I'm not letting this shit die. I was wrong, baby. It's not like you predicted December 8th. No, but how fucking amazing is that? It's the day before my birthday. Happy birthday to me, bitches. Let's go. And before it's delayed till next year. Um, Ubernix says, update. It seems that XP gained from just playing matches will not be a thing and only do challenges will allow progression through the battle pass. This isn't what I wanted, but I hope 343 can implement something in the future to allow players to progress without just challenges. Jerry Hook replied with, we hear you on this. Daily challenges for playing matches is the plan for launch. 
where we're always looking at ways to expand progression across the board. We'll have more to share about the outcomes from key tech preview feedback, including this in an upcoming blog on Waypoint. And Uni said, the tech preview had an issue that caused people to run out of challenges. Our current plans for launch, while not infinite, mean it's extremely difficult to run out of daily challenges. I won't say impossible, because there are some grinders out there, but I'd be impressed. Okay. And then Kami102, this is from uh, Mia on um, our Discord, provided a link to this comment, and I'll read it on Reddit here, and it states, this is bad news. Look, I'm not trying to be negative, but one thing I noticed a lot in the flight was that a lot of challenges were like, get 15 kills with the Needler. On its own, it's not bad. When it's just an optional bonus where after time you unlock it after getting 15 Needler kills through normal gameplay. But when you make it so that get 15 kills with the Needler is on your challenge list and it's the only way to get XP to level up your battle pass, then it completely breaks the flow of your gameplay and the weapon sandbox. You are then essentially ignoring the weapon sandbox and instead joining the game uh, with the sole focus of getting kills with the Needler to complete the challenge. You're camping the Needler spawn point every time. You're ignoring all other weapons on the map now because the only ob- not because the only objective is to get kills with the Needler. And that's just you. What if three of your teammates also have the Needler challenge? Now the three of you are fighting over control for a Needler because all three of you need the challenge. That's breaking the flow of gameplay and breaking the weapon sandbox. That's why the decision is terrible. So... Okay, to hit on that point real quick, we do know that there are challenge swaps. Mm -hmm. But we don't know how many you can have at a time. We don't know how you earn them outside, outside of the product promotions that they've had so far, where you've had to buy a physical thing in order to get a code to get challenge swaps. There was one in the battle pass in the tech preview. Okay. So you can get them through the battle pass. Okay. So there's that you can swap challenges out, but then the next question, like you mentioned, what if challenges are allowed in bot matches? I'm just going to go play recruit bots. I was going to say, that could, help, challenges. that could help mitigate some things. So my problem is, and I said this in the Discord server as well, my problem with this is I was hoping, now for the record, we we have only played the, tech, the first technical preview. Mm-hmm. That's it. So that's all we can really base this off of. We haven't played the full game, but I will say this. What I was really hoping for was... Um, I didn't care that there was when, when it was clarified that there's not going to be an item at every free tier. I didn't care about that because you don't see that happen with any battle pass. Right. Right. So who, I mean, you could be cool and establish a new norm and have that. That'd be awesome. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not hurt by it. Not being there. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm going to buy the, the battle pass. We'll just say the pass is 50 tiers, right? Yep. That's a hundred piece of cosmetic items. You'd have to, or items in game items. You'd have to give out. Whereas if it's, Every few, maybe you only have to come up with 70. You know? Right, right. Um, but the, the thing I was getting at was I was hoping that this was going to be like a, a Fortnite, um, I mean, hell, a war zone. I'm thinking of yeah, where games you get that have battle for things. For doing do basically game. anything, right? Now, at the same time, it doesn't need to be for doing anything. But objective-based items, kills, assists, uh, medals that you get, just stuff like that would contribute XP and you could adjust the, the levels accordingly, but that could always apply to your battle pass. Mm-hmm. Now, when uni said that it'll, he'll be hard pressed to think that you'll run out of daily challenges to complete. It's just the yo voodoo voodoo. That's right. Martin was streaming. Martin, thank you for the raid, man. Holy motherfuck. Welcome. Martin Street Martin viewers. Welcome folks. And there's the show notes. And there's as always. his first thing he always says in here. Welcome Martin. I hope you had a great stream. Welcome. Thank you very much for the raid. Hope you're doing great. Um, we are currently on the topic of battle pass yes. and challenges. Yes, we are. Justin says, I think there will be bot challenges, PVP challenges, campaign challenges, but I'd rather just be XP per game challenges reward extra XP, like all Halo challenges. 
if I was to put a blanket statement on it, that is exactly what I'd say. Yeah. And gotcha. my, so my problem is, um, sure. Uni came out and said that he'd be hard pressed to think that you're going to run out of daily challenges. That's awesome. But my problem is what if I don't have the challenges that I want? What if I have to spend those challenge swaps? And what if I run out of challenge swaps? What if I have to buy more challenge swaps? What if, uh, how am I getting them? And my other problem is, and I mentioned this in the discord as well. And kind of like what Cammy was talking about here, depending upon the challenge, it forces you to play in a way that you might not want to play. And I'm not, it now the, depending upon the severity of the challenge, it may not be that big of a fucking deal, but you're right. You don't know what other, what other players on your team have for challenges. What if they have one of the same ones you do? What if you have, I mean, this is going to sound dumb, but like, what if you have a challenge for, a, for getting a certain amount of weapon kills and that map that you're on doesn't have that weapon? Like there's just, obviously there's things you have to take into consideration. It's just, I wish that, and again, there's only at launch. They said that they're going to address things. I was just hoping that XP that you earn in the match would count towards your battle pass will go. Sure. Um, I get the concern. I get the want to have matches. Just going to try to be the purveyor of positivity here. By all means, please do. We don't know how many challenge swaps you get. You're right there. Yep. We don't know how many daily challenges you may get. There may be four to go at at a time, maybe two, like we saw in the technical preview, but we didn't have all content unlocked. So maybe there are more daily challenges. Absolutely. And you'll have a couple weapon ones. So if someone has the needler, you go for the VK, forget the name, or commando. the bulldog, the commando, the bulldog, the sniper, whatever it may be. But this, they're doing something different. I can't fully knock it till I see it. Yeah. And while it's not what I wanted, it is what it is. Got to accept it. It's what they're doing. Um, well, I, I know you can, you can say it's going to change gameplay, but I, I just figure these challenges, it seems like everyone wants to like get these challenges done, which is great, but they're just daily challenges. There's going to be weekly challenges, which probably provide a much bigger boost. There's going to be other ways than just multiplayer matches to to get your battle pass going. I feel like people are being maybe a little bit too picky on this subject. And I think it's going to be fine when the game comes. I'll say this as a rebuttal. You have to accept it now. But if when the game fully comes out and you're not a fan of the systems in place or even in other technical previews and they've changed it or fixed things, switched things up, modified things and you're still not happy with the way things are let your voices be heard within the official channels in a respectful manner because i can tell you one thing while they may see the hate spewing and shit like that they're not going to act on that it's something that i've said for the longest time don't be an asshole believe it or not it's simple it's simple to not be an asshole in person and online just don't. If you have feedback, critical or otherwise, put it in the in the um, appropriate channels and respectively. They obviously want to know what you think. Just be good about it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, I'm not worried. I'm st- at this point. I'm just. I'm just happy we're getting the game. We get to play it. I know people were going to want to slam through that battle pass, but I feel like there will be plenty of opportunity for that. And if you don't like a daily challenge, it's gone tomorrow. That's, that's what I'll say. I wonder when reset's going to be on the challenges. Is it like a, is it a noon thing? Like, like noon Pacific typically, or is it going to be like a midnight thing? Like Valorant's is like 7 PM our time, isn't it? They're, they're a the store. They're store. Yeah. I don't know. It's when six or seven is. our time. But yeah, I think what Destiny is a Destiny's noon Pacific, isn't it? I don't remember. I think their weekly resets are. I don't know. Nah, I think we'll be all right though. I'm. I think we'll be fine. It's just. 
this is one of this is going to sound dumb, but this is one of those things. This is going to be a poor use of this word, but it's one of those things that's like an expectation, where I expected, I assumed that it was going to be you'd have traditional XP that that helps, and then challenges would be an an additive to that. Yeah, would be a bigger, a little bit of a bigger boost, right? And we're all, we already know that we're getting challenges that are going to be tied to specific items that you can get. Yeah. So like, there's going to be that too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, part of me just expected and assumed, which is not good on my part that we were just going to have XP a thing and then challenges would be an additional thing. But as of launch, that's not going to be the case. Um, Beth says, I definitely agree that I wish there was XP linked to things you do normally, kills, assists, et cetera, outside of just challenges. I just hope it's more play X number of games, win X number of matches, et cetera, to kind of cut back on that risk of games being thrown because someone was too focused on getting shotgun kills or whatever, rather than focusing on making the right place to try and win. Uh, Maddie says, this might sound kind of complicated, but I'd be, but it'd be cool if there were separate challenges based off what you're playing. Oh, sure. Like uh, if you're playing in Slayer, if you're playing CTF, yeah, competitive BTB. You go, yeah, you go into competitive, and it's more about capturing zones for if there's strongholds or something of that yeah. nature. Spend or using time on vehicles the hill. of BTB. Yeah, yeah. Get get a number of vehicle kills. Um. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we we have no idea what the the expansiveness of the challenge system is going to be. So I feel like we'll just have to wait and see. I feel like Let's there's going to be a lot. I would hope so. They've had so many games to look back to for ideas. Um, like you select what you want to play and there's a separate list of challenges depending on the playlist. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be really cool. I definitely think it could work. The question is whether or not they do something like that. We'll have to wait and see. I like the idea though. I think that's cool because then you're not, you're not, you don't have to play that playlist in order to get a challenge that you have in your log. Yeah. Like you can, you can play whatever you want because they'd be challenges specific to that thing. That would help mitigate things for sure. Yeah. So who knows? Um, I just think that they're going to give you enough challenges to like, I don't know if you guys experienced this during the technical preview, but one of my challenges was always play five matches. So like every match I played, I always felt like I was making progress. Sure. Oh man. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, Beth says when I play games of challenges, I uh, kind of approach it like Will said, Oh, somebody already has a sniper. So I'll go for the other challenge. Instead, if the majority follows that same kind of thought process. It shouldn't be a huge deal or I'm hoping anyway. No, I think what people are nervous about is kind of what, the, that blog post said and or Reddit post where people are hoarding the needle or sitting around it, not moving around. But um, I think that's going to happen more in social. If you're in a competitive playlist, I don't know. I don't know if you could tie challenges to competitive because you want it to be pinging com- competitive gameplay. Yeah. But like if, 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 if the ping system's in competitive or whatever, like using that to help your team, call things out, use a ping however many times. I don't fucking don't think of like stupid ass challenges really. <laughs> get get over get however many assists. Hell if I know. Um Beth says, I like that idea too. It gives you motivation to try different lists, or if you don't like a certain playlist, there's another set of challenges, a specific list you do like. Agreed. And then Justin, I'm sorry, man. I feel for you. I wish the best of luck in getting your controls figured out. What are you changing to? Bumper jumper? It's great. You should try it out if you haven't. Doesn't take that long to learn. Um, all right, Will, is there anything else you want to add for the topic before we continue on? Nope, I'm good. All right. Then uh, that's it for the topic, which means, oh, here we fucking go. It's time for Con of the Games Watch! Will, hit me with the motherfucking sound bite! Roster Media! Baby, let's yeah. get into some CDL roster mania. Paris Legion, they dropped the entire fucking thing with Scraps, uh, Zaptius, Temp, and Aqua. And 
their trademark and patent has been abandoned. So the Paris Legion appear like they're going to be no mo. They go. They go. The LA Gorillas also dropped their entire roster of silly assault, mental, and apathy. Um. Also, real quick, going back to the topic just for a second. Snag says, I'm sure they'll be fairly general. Three or four people going for sniper kills just seems like an obvious bad move on their end. Bumper jumper for the win? Fuck yeah, Snag. You got yeah. it. Um, Beth says, portraying you for sniper to try and get a challenge, even if you're not good with it. It's instances like that. I'd be, uh, I'd be cool with those kind of challenges being uh, completable against bots. Um, Justin says, I'm trying to make Halo 5 uh, bumper jumper to match my bumper jumper controls across all other Halos, so I can actually jump between Halo 5 and MCC easier. Okay, I can understand that. Um, all right. Seattle Surge, they dropped their entire roster of Octane, Pristini, Classic, and Gunless, and this was announced during Champs. I missed that. The announcement of them dropping their roster from the Seattle Surge account happened during Champs. Yeah, what a mess. Oh, my God. The London Royal Ravens, they dropped their entire roster except Afro. They're so, like Afro. Apparently, their plan is to build a team around him. The New York Subliners Diamond Con becomes an unrestricted free agent. Toronto Ultra Methods becomes an unrestricted free agent. The LA Thieves TJ Haley becomes an unrestricted free agent. The Dallas Empire Vivid becomes a restricted free agent. And Crim6 becomes a restricted free agent. And uh, the biggest one, Optic Chicago. Envoy becomes an unrestricted free agent and formal retires from competing. And this is a twit longer. And I put it in here. It states here we are 11 years down the road. Oh, actually I should state that the, the title of this twit longer is if you're horny for formal read this. Yeah. (laughs) So H four F here we are 11 years down the road. It's been a wild ride. Learned a lot about myself through this journey, and I can say I'm happy with what I've leave behind. To all the players I have had the pleasure of competing against, I appreciate all of you. You not only tested me as a player, but also as a person. To see all of us grow up together in both Halo and COD, it's been a blast. At this point in my life, I have a much different perspective on things, and I've learned to appreciate even the hardest of losses. Still wish I would have killed Assault in that 1v1. That'll haunt me forever. If you're wondering why I'd like to pursue other options from competing, it just isn't the same anymore. After 10 years of scrims, tournaments, and just grinding all together, it can get tiresome. I do believe I could still compete, but it'd just be straight up selfish to whoever I'd be playing with, knowing that I might not give them my all. I wish nothing but the best to all my friends still competing, truly. To my fans, especially the Green Wall, you now have my full attention. I like to see where creating content might take me. It's definitely grown on me throughout this year, through the podcast and other videos we made at the HQ. I'd like to personally thank all of you for continued support over the years, except for the last bit of uh, you guys... Uh, except for the, this last bit, you guys kind of turned on me. LOL, all love, though. I know you guys just want me, the team to excel, and I do too. This will be an exciting and frightening journey to go down, but I'm with it if you guys are as well. Hope to see you all of you guys in my streams. I like to get better connecting with my fans. I feel like I've been a little distant from all of you this year. I'd also like to thank my mom and dad, who believed in me every step of the way. Without you guys, this wouldn't have been possible. That's all I got for you guys for now. Thanks for taking the time to read this and just know this isn't a goodbye. It's just a step towards having more fun and enjoying video games without the added stress of competing with love formal. All right. Here's what's going to happen. Here's, here's, he's retiring. Oh, you're saying he's coming back to Halo now? Yeah, that would be sick, wouldn't it? <laughs> Come on. He quits. He's still with Optic. He gets tough. Well... <laughs> about that. <laughs> Content creator for Optic. How about that? Well, for whoever owns Optic. Yeah, that's, <laughs> there you go. He's a content creator, and he, he, you know, he does that for a little bit, and he's like, man, I'm really missing it. I'm having fun with this new game that just came out on December 8th, Halo Infinite, and I miss those days. Let's get in touch with some of those guys, and then he starts playing Halo again and competes in Halo. Eh? Anybody? Anybody? No? I would. Like, uh, eh? It would be cool. Now... I would want to see, here's my problem though, because lethals on Sentinels, Sentinels already have an incredibly stacked roster. I would still love to see formal and lethal come together again. So like back in the Halo reach days. So we'll see if, I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Anything can happen. I mean, Ninja teasing some shit. So yeah, yeah. Anything can happen. Um, 
But speaking about optic sources, Dallas Empire and talks to acquire optic brand Chicago Call of Duty League spot up for sale. This is by Jacob Wolf and Corey Day. And so this is by Jacob Wolf and then Corey Davis. Wait, no, this is Jesus Christ. This is by both Jacob Wolf and Corey Davis of dot esports. Envy gaming energy esports and Hector Hex Rodriguez are discussing a multi-pronged deal that if completed would see optic gaming and the Dallas empire merge and the Chicago Do- a call of duty league spot sold to a third party sources familiar with those discussions told dot esports paperwork for such a deal is yet to be finalized, but the discussion is heated up as hex looks to finally break off from energy esports, the current owner and backer of the call of duty leagues optic Chicago. News that Hex looked to seek such an arrangement first broke in May, per Dexerto report. If finalized, the Empire and Optic would come under the same ownership and would likely result in the retirement of the Empire brand, with the Call of Duty League's Dallas team adopting the Optic name. Hex would then help control the team alongside Empire owner NB Gaming's management, including longtime friendly rival Mike Hastro Rufo. <laughs> Energy and Hex have been at odds for nearly a year, with the latter informing his colleagues he did not want to work together anymore in fall of 2020, a source said. Since then, the two have tried to find a resolution, but have failed to do so. Energy originally signed a contract that would allow Hex a multi-month period to find funding from other investors and buy the organization out of Optic and take over the brand and slot, according to sources. Hex could not find funding or fund that acquisition himself in time, defaulting on the deal, sources said. The Call of Duty League then specifically approved a deal that would see Hex be responsible for payroll and operation costs of Optic and avoid the traditional vetting process imposed by the League for an acquirer, a source said. Ultimately, he could not pay those costs, and NRG stepped back and funded the team, according to a source. That left the two at an impasse. That is, until Envy entered the picture. Now, the Chicago slot is for sale without the Optic brand attached, and Hex is attempting to facilitate a deal for the Optic brand to head south to Texas. Over the past few days, both Optic and the Empire have cut two players from each of their active Call of Duty League rosters, fueling speculation the two could merge. The Empire moved Crim6 and Vivid off its active roster and is allowing both players to explore buyout options. Optic has had two roster changes as well, with Formal retiring from competitive play and Envoy being released today. That leaves four players between the two teams, Skump, Dashy, Shotzi, and Illy. Energy first acquired the Optic brand after the 2020 Call of Duty League season. That year, it and Hex built a new brand, the Chicago Huntsman, while Optic remained under the ownership of Immortals Gaming Club, then the owner of the LA uh, of the Los Angeles Call of Duty League Splot. Splot Slot. In another acquisition move similar to this proposed deal, Immortals sold the Optic brand to Energy and the uh, and the Los Angeles Slot to 100 Thieves, who founded a new brand, Los Angeles Thieves. If this deal is finalized, Optic will be its in its third city across three seasons, this time in Dallas. And then from Voodoo Man, Martin Ohms, he posted in the Twitter that Optic Gaming in a document or whatever, I don't know where this exactly came from, but Optic Gaming dissolution date was August 20th, 2021. So well, it's think, already happened there. Well, that that's the splitting of the brand from the Chicago team. Right. So the Chicago team is officially, if what appears to be officially up for sale. Yes. So who knows what's going to happen there. But I put it in the Discord too that like if this happens, this would be the craziest thing I'd ever seen in esports. You literally have two of the largest brands, two of the largest esports brands in the United States in Envy and Optic, and they're going to merge? Like they, they even say that they've been longtime friendly rivals. Like, I just, wow. Talk about something I definitely didn't see coming. If this happens, if this happens. Trying to wrap my head around everything. Because does that mean, isn't Envy Energy? No, Envy is their own. Envy is their own. Yep, Envy is completely their own. What I think, so does that mean Envy would own everything Optic, like outside of CDL as well? Is that what? Fuck vinyl, man. I have no idea. Or is it just the the Call of Duty side of it? Because, yeah, because it says there that more than likely the Empire name would go away and it would be Dallas Optic. Doesn't sound right. It, I mean, it doesn't sound as good. Optic Dallas? Optic Dallas, yeah, there you go. 
same di- they, like that. It'd, it'd be that. Like they keep the optic name. They drop Empire. It's messed up. It is fucking weird. It's really fucking weird. Like I, these are two organizations who've been at it, like ever since I can remember, and. Then this report comes out. I'm like, what the fuck? I, I thought it was a joke. Like, to be completely honest with you, I thought it was a DeSerto article first. And I'm like, that's not, that can't be true, right? And if, no. If Envy buys Optic. Yeah. Does that mean Or they that, merge. However, the merge, merge takes place. Do they use Optic Gaming for current Envy teams? Do they switch it up? Is that in their new branding? No, I don't think Hasher would get rid of that. Like, yeah, there's no way he there's would, he no would way. give that up. And, and it's spe- literally after the announcement of Envy being, I mean, we already knew they were one of the teams in Infinite, but seeing them as the, one of the partnered organizations for HCS, there's no way they changed that. Halo being a small piece of the pie, but like, yeah, you don't change that. Hasher wouldn't do that. And it's from the sounds of the merger, it sounds like this is just strictly Call of Duty. Like, this is just a... Sure. There that, you go. That name would change for yes. Call of Duty. And then Hex would keep... It sounds to me... This is no confirmation. It sounds to me like Hex would keep everything Optic. Hastro would keep everything Envy. But for Call of Duty's sake, to get Hex away from Energy, hey, come over here. You have two players. We have two players. Bada bing, bada boom. Put the names together. Bada bing, bada boom. We win some chips. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. This is weird. It's so but, weird. But now you're like, it's weird. But all that envy branding, I mean, all the empire branding goes away. Yeah, just like that. And that's a lot of like, that's a lot of merch. Like, there's, I mean, yeah. If you got your hands on some, en- I should buy some envy shit right now just to he- or, do it, man. Or envy, um, empire stuff just to freaking have it before it's gone. Get it while the getting's good, folks. Who the fuck knows? This is weird. This is very weird. I, like I said, never saw anything like this happening ever. Who buys the Chicago spot? Like, what other gaming? Ooh. And what about freaking Paris? Yeah, who Paris? buys the Paris spot? Does anyone buy the Paris spot? Does anybody buy the Paris spot? And does it have to be a Paris team, or can they move it? You know what I mean? Oh, I bet they'd be able to move it. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm an investor and I'm coming in and I want that Paris spot, I'd take it wherever I fucking want. Now maybe there's a stipulation that it has to be on that side of the world, oh, no. but like it can't come to the U.S. Yeah. I don't know. But there was also talks, and you, we talked about this multiple times. There was there was talks about it expanding past the amount of teams we have now, but COVID happened. Yeah. So what happens there? Do we reassess that situation to bring on more organizations if they want to buy in? This is fucking weird. This this doesn't happen. Like the, the Hex Energy thing was like, okay, he has an avenue to get Optic back. This is what he always wanted, right? Um, Beth states, I don't think they could do that because they would put Optic being used outside of the CDL, and that's not allowed as far as I know. The branding would have to be exclusive for the CDL. Mm. Okay, so, so, okay. That's, I mean, that's fine then, right? Because Optic doesn't have anything else, right? Maddie says, I wonder if Hastro and Hex work out a deal where Envy gets the Optic brand until Hex can raise the money to get it back on his own. That's, that's, that's definitely possible. Yo, Caveman, thank you for the follow as well. Sorry, I missed that earlier. Thank you so much. Welcome to the live show. Yeah, I don't know. What does that mean? What does it mean? <laughs> Envy and optic merge. This is fucking weird. That's <laughs> that's all I have. That, sure. That's literally it. I have no other way to convey how I feel about this. I've never seen something like this before. Oh, Maddie says, I don't think that's true, Beth. Atlanta phase and phase clan. But wasn't that like the weird one? Or well, I mean, hundred thieves as well. Yeah, because it, well, it's just LA thieves, not a hundred thieves. But it is hundred thieves. Yeah, and you had uh, they used the thieves branding. That's why it was Optic Chicago or Chicago Optic, whatever they had. Yeah, not Optic Gaming. It wasn't Optic Gaming. 
Same thing with uh, three. No, that's the three. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say because you have Atlanta Phase or Phase Clan. So, like Maddie said, you got that. That's it, right? Those are the three. Yep. It just couldn't be that one hundred percent match. So there you go. So yeah, it'd be it'd be optic. I think that was the loophole they found. It was. That says okay. So there you go. So it'd be optic, like optic Dallas, and then it'd be optic gaming everywhere else. Yep. So. Yeah, because that that must be how. Yeah, obviously, because Dallas Empire, they're not said ne- they didn't say envy anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Who the fuck knows? Like I said, it's really weird. I just never, never saw this coming. And when I when I saw the headline, I thought it was a joke. I honestly thought it was a joke. Like, there's no way, but apparently it is. So. I mean, it's not confirmed yet. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. A lot of reports are coming out about this though, so right. it, it and, makes it feel and a lot of from sources. Yeah. Or sources said. Who are the fucking sources? That says everyone just calls them FaZe, but the trademark is FaZe is FaZe Clan. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. That must be it. All right. The final piece of Cotton Other Games Watch. Will, you're upset? A little bit. A little bit. Not upset. Just. It is what it is. Just a different platform. Yeah. Dr. Lupo signs exclusive streaming deal with YouTube. This is by Dr. Lupo. And then as well as Nathan Grayson of the Washington post who did an article on this acquisition, I guess you could say my second longest sub going away. What's your first longest summit. Okay. And Um, technically once they started that like continuation thing, so I was sub to summit for a while, stopped sub to Lupo. Sure. Sometimes Tyne's content just didn't line up. I think my f- my longest running sub is for T-Rex. Yeah. And I've been going for years. Yeah. Um. So, Dr. Lupo signed an exclusive streaming deal with YouTube. Um. This, from, from the article, uh, he states that he's set for life with this deal. We don't know the contents of the deal. It, it is what it is. It's not our money. Who gives a shit? But uh, he says that he's set for life. Um, And one of the biggest aspects, one of the biggest reasons why he took this deal, A, he's set for life, and B, he wants to spend more time with his family. Um, He has a a really young son who's who's growing up right before his eyes. He wants to be able to take vacations with him. He wants to be able to to watch his son grow up, basically. Um, And this really gives him a better opportunity to do so. So, um, Loop, congratulations to you, man. Um... And yeah, I hope I hope this is exactly what you've been wanting and looking for. And uh I do hope you're able to spend as much time with your son as you possibly can. Um so fuck yeah, man. Tool says, yo, almost episode two hundred, boys. Almost. Yeah, we got a treat for that one too. Moving along. Uh, I can say that. Uh, we do. We have a treat for that one. Well, I I told you about the editing dilemma. I mean, right. But regardless, it's going to be, it's going to be episode 200 or, or 201, right? One of the two. I put 201 out before two. It'll be, it'll be, how are we going to do that? It'll be that. It'll be, it'll be that. Like it's, it's one of those. Is the treat getting me on the show? No, but it is getting somebody else on the show. Well, now you're going too far. I'm not going too far. No, no, you're like, I'm no, not I'm saying so- who it is. I'm not saying who it is. I'm not saying who it is. You'll have, it's Ninja. Okay. I'm sorry. Fuck. I, I gave it away, guys. <laughs> Man. Josh out here leaking our secrets. Actually, I lied. It's, it's Ninja and Summit. It's both. There you go. Run wild, everybody. Have fun. Lies. I'm just kidding. It's, it's, it's not. But we do have a guest for our 200th. And it's great because again, I'm I'm not gonna say who it is. Um, it's great how it lined up though. It's really great how it lined up though. We asked the individual if they'd be willing because we have this milestone coming up, and they they happily obliged to it. So we we can't wait, and I'll I'll happily say that it's our biggest guest yet. I will happily say that it is our biggest guest yet. And that's nothing against any other guests that we've had on the show. Oh my gosh. That the, <laughs> it's the summit dancing emote or some shit. It's him punching. His oh, monitor. It is. Oh. Sorry. 
You're talking too much. If it's not Tashi, I riot. We'll start rioting. Um, Maddie, spoiler, it's me. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. You got it. It's Maddie. Uh, come on, guys. I'm not that popular. <laughs> Guys, if you heard of Maddie Rums, owner of NoobCombo.com, he's going to be on our show to unveil his new merch. Oh, wait, that doesn't exist. Yet. It doesn't exist yet. Um, Matt says, there has to be something big going on. Scum tweeted after Envoy was dropped and Formal retired. Something about this will all make sense soon, or they're working on something big. I'm hoping so, man. Maddie from the top rope. I can, top rope, I can hear the music. <laughs> That's the John Cena. I know what that is <laughs> for the folks who did. <laughs> oh fuck! All right, can we move on? Yeah, episode two hundred though. Special guest can't fucking wait. Biggest one yet. Um, that's it for uh, cut another games watch. It's time for Will's Adventures with the Nailovers and other games too. Will. Yeah. What did you happen to play last week? <laughs> we'll start with Valorant. I played some Valorant. I played a lot of Valorant. And, oh, I see something. There was a time when I was playing. So when I first got into ranked, first got into ranked, Place bronze. I was playing with heavy rainfall. I straight up told him, I'm like, Dave, Dave baby. I am not a bronze player. And today that is the truth because I made it to silver one. Let's go. Everybody give a round of applause to <laughs> Will in the chat, please. Everybody, round of applause for Will. He is not a bronze player. Fuck you, Dave. And that is that. Not a fuck you to Dave. I, he was oh, like, no, it is. It was like a, it was like we were trying to. I'm know, sorry. Did he get banned from? Did he get trying? banned? From what? From voice chat, yeah. Oh, yeah, in Valorant, yeah. yeah. Of course. It's Dave. Dave. <laughs> Davey Wavy. One of our swords. So, I'm saying he goes. So next season starts in seven days. Seven days. And uh, Mr. Joe, who I play a lot of games with. Narcotic I, Narwhal. That's, yes, that is his gamer tag. Um, we've decided to go for gold next season in Valorant. So that's going to be the goal. Go for gold. Go for gold. We're going to make our way through silver and try to get to gold. It feels lofty. But do, you, think, do you want a bronze player joining you? <laughs> oh, things are getting... Well, if we make it through... There's like a certain point, like a certain... They have like... Uh, they have oh, the threshold where you can't join people above or below you, right? Yeah, I, but I don't know if like... I think silver... So here's the thing about our last game too. I'm... I'm I was a bronze three in our last game, right? Sure. And I, I did not, I didn't do wonderful. We had a Reyna that was just slaying. Okay. A duelist, right? That's yeah. kind of, I was a sport character, but they had a sage on their team. That was a silver three that went like four and 20. And I'm like, you're a silver three. I'm a bronze three. And I shit on you all game. How did you get the silver three? I'm like, I'm fucking making it to gold. So it's going to happen. I'm going to work on it. Going to keep going. Hell yeah, man. Um, Destiny 2. Oh, yeah. A little frustrated. Oh, yeah. Same. So I'm still 12. I was 1250 when I started light level. I'm 1272, I think, right now. That's, I'm about there as well. But Soft cap you, is 1270, so. You do two story missions, and then the next thing is... Recommended power 1290. It's not matchmaking. It's hard. It's hard as fuck. Yeah. Do you get I have a it? hand cannon? No, because it I, was really hard. I went to the wrong area. Of oh, where I, I went around the whole fucking map. <laughs> yeah, I got sick of it. I'm like, I'm out of here. Granted, the only, the really, be the best part about that mission is there's no darkness zone. So there's no like, yeah, going back to a checkpoint, which is awesome. Yeah, that was good. That was but the only silver lining in that fuckery. That happened. But, like, I get the story is supposed to drive the gameplay, but it's not for me. It doesn't well, it, feel like It also sucks when you can't progress. Yeah, it's the same gameplay loop that we've experienced before. Softcap should have been 1,300. I'm just going to throw that out there. 
I could, yeah. Your your seasonal pinnacle top is thirteen thirty right now. The soft cap should have been thirteen hundred. Yeah, not twelve seventy. Yes, that? it should have been soft cap to thirteen hundred, powerful to thirteen twenty, and then pinnacles to thirteen thirty because of the season. That's what and it should I'm, have been. I'm at the point where like, I don't want to sit and play freaking gambit crucible strikes to continue the story stuff at a decent pace. And I'm tired of doing that extra stuff. I get it. They're trying to include you in the whole gameplay loop, but I just don't want to. On top of that, they removed the powerful rewards for doing three strikes of the of the uh, subclass that it chose. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got rid of that. So now it's just complete eight bounties for both uh, Crucible Strikes and Gambit. Those are three powerfuls. Um, and then there's stuff tied to each specific season. So like the the seasonal um, event, the six man event in this one, um, if you do four of them, I think, or three, if you do three of them, you get a powerful. Yeah, and those take forever is, if you have shitty fucking teammates. Is this? <sighs> they're trying to push that MMO aspect, right? Yeah, but this is, is this it, a poor implementation. But uh, is it? Or are we just too used to the non MMO side of it that we don't want all these aspects taking over our gameplay? Coming from like I play, I have I play and played a decent amount of MMOs, and while I never got to the end game portion of those MMOs, mm -hmm. all of them that I've played, no matter what I'm doing, I feel like I'm progressing something. Yeah. With Destiny Two right now, with this season, if you're not at that, if you're not at like powerful cap. I'm, I don't feel like I, I don't even feel like I'm making progress right now because I have it's, to do powerful stuff. And this is the problem that I had with the challenge conversation in infinite. It's forcing me to do stuff I don't want to do. And that's not what I want from a game. Sure. Um, it makes me feel like I can't put down and pick up the game when I want. I feel no. like I have to keep playing mm -hmm. to stay at that highlight level. So I can, so I can do what I want when yes. I want, but someone, I don't know that. The only reason why I want to keep playing right now is because I want to play the weekly story mission that comes out. And I'm afraid I'm not, I'm going to be like even the 1290 one. I'm afraid I'm going to be too low yeah. in order to experience that as it happens because there is some cool shit that's already happened. I like the cutscenes that we've already seen for Christ's sake. Yeah. And I'm just worried that you're going to miss something or miss out. on Yeah. Something. And I could always go FOMO, watch a YouTube. Recap. Yeah. yeah. And I could always go watch a YouTube recap. Those are obviously a thing that exists. Yeah. But I do like the gameplay of the game. It's like, it's just that the game is, it, it's just, it feels like it's, it, it's not making itself fun to play right now. And that's sad. It's just sad. Yeah. So I got bored pretty quick. I'll leave it there. Um, Halo five. I Halo was waiting five. for a friend to get online. I was typing in the LFG, like anyone game in today, Justin hopped on. I was like, we can play some Halo 5. And I was like, yeah, I haven't touched Halo in a while. Sure. But we got to playing. I had a ton of fun. Awesome. So thank you, Justin. Um, and do I miss just playing an arena shooter? You know, I've been in oh. Valorant and um, pretty much Valorant. <laughs> so playing something a little different was great. Uh, going back quickly on the Cotton of the Games Watch section, Voodoo uh, replies to Maddie and says, however, the way he's doing it is really showing Hex in a negative light from all the things I'm hearing behind the scenes. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Is it because, I mean, if you look at it, he told uh, Energy that they would have the brand until he paid him back. He wasn't able to pay it, so now they're just selling it. And it's going to be like this infinite loop of will he ever pay back? You know what I mean? Maddie says, I just think Hex wants to get away from NRG and is going uh, to one of the few, if only, other org owners he can trust, which is Hashro. I don't know, man. So you're saying Hex is losing face by trying to get Optic back. He always said Optic's his baby. He did. He didn't want to get rid of it in the first place, but he had to. Like, I want to know what's what's going... I mean, it, it's not my money, so I really shouldn't care about this, but everything that's coming out about it is what's happening in the financials of that. Like, how how is it so... How is it, like it appears, is so dire? 
that's that's what I'm worried about. I want what's best for Hex, and like I'd love for him to just ma- keep Optic forever. It, but it, I just can't help but feel something's wrong. Like something's genuinely wrong here. And again, not my not my money. It's not my concern. Like it's not my any of my business. I just wish we had a little bit more context as what's going on there because it, it sucks. Yeah, you miss playing an arena shooter. Yeah. The respawns, you know. Are you going to try Splitgate? I played the beta. Right. That was a long time ago, right? A long time. Yeah. I'm just, it was just eh. PC only. Eh. Okay. They came out with their season zero battle pass, Will. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been determining picking it up because the console beta is out right now. You want to talk about randomness, just fucking portals everywhere, getting shot from wherever you don't know. I'm wondering how it plays, though. It's been it's been a long time. It's been a while. Since I, uh, Voodoo says there's a lot of question marks there, but yeah, we'll see something come out later. That's good. I, I, like, I, like I said, I hope everything is okay with him, with Optic, because it's, it's a brand that's synonymous with North American esports, right? It's, everybody knows the green wall. Um, Justin says I legit just hit download on it. Uh, maybe it's my infinite time killer. Hey, you never know. Or if I get will out of the destiny Two slump and we all played together. Yeah. <laughs> Part of me is kidding because I don't want to force anybody to play. So they don't want to no, fucking play. It, like, it could be a chore and I don't want it to be a fucking chore. That's what's so, ah, it's agonizing, man. Fuck. Yeah. Let's move on. What did you play? I played destiny Two. Already talked about it. You did. Uh, I played some more Final Fantasy fourteen. I'm still plugging away at the Heaven Sword expansion. That's an MMO. It's probably my favorite MMO that I've played, and, and to the point that everything you're doing is really progressing the story because you have to go through the story, and the story is genuinely good. So you're always progressing towards something. You're always getting something different. Uh, as you progress, you get different gear sets for the character that for the class that you're playing. Um, it's just that's kind of like what I wish Destiny was doing, where everything that you did, you always felt like you're progressing towards something. It's what it used to be, but mm-hmm. not anymore. Um, Justin says also just downloaded that this weekend, thinking about that crossplay. Yeah, I saw you guys talking about it in the Discord as well. So, and yeah, crossplay is officially a thing. It released for it released fully in j- this season. So and Battle Eye. So yes, cheaters. Beware. Yeah. Fuck you, cheaters. I'm also, like, more inclined to try trials when I get a higher light level. Sure. Because there's matchmaking now. Yep. So someone please carry me. And <sighs> there's, like we talked about last week, there's more opportunities for rewards instead of just getting uh, flawless. Oh, flawless, yep. Yeah, so that's that's fantastic. It's based off of round wins versus... It's just, round and match wins. Yeah, yeah, versus just wins without losing. Exactly. Know? So really, really fucking cool. See, it's like the, the title of this episode is one step forward, two steps back. And it, it feels like Destiny's doing the same fucking thing. But whatever. I They are trying to undo a lot that's already there, though. Yes, that is very, very, very true. Very true. And like I and like I mentioned before, they said that they had a plan in place that's it's not gonna come to fruition right away. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna, an overnight change. It's gonna take time. So we have to give it time. And it feels like the Witch Queen is the first step to that. The Witch Queen might, like, how do I want to put this? Because Oryx, right? Taken King? Yes. Was great for D1. That was the transitioning point for D1. So I don't think Witch Queen is going to be that quite yet. Well, for D2, Forsaken was supposed to be that for D2. And then Beyond Light was supposed to be that for D2. The reason why I think the Witch Queen is uh, just a step in the right direction. I'm not saying complete overhaul. Yeah. But I think it's the first step because weapon crafting's coming in for the first time. Yeah. Regardless of how they implement that monetization otherwise. Um, and it really feels... What the... What the with the promises to the story that they've had, comparing it to God of War and a Halo campaign in Titanfall 2. I don't know, man. I'm hoping for you. Don't worry. Like, don't get me wrong. I love the story so far, regardless of how convoluted it can be. But 
I really feel like the Witch Queen is the first step towards something greater, towards their grand vision. Sure. But it's definitely not going to be the switch that gets flipped, and it's like, this is the Taken King of D1. Right. So. Yep, that, no, that's the point I was trying to get. It's, that it's, it's a step, not the... The destination. Right. We may not see the the full-blown transition. I'm, I'm going to go for way further out. We might not see the full transition until after the light and darkness saga is complete. You might not be wrong. I'm just I'm saying like full-blown transition to this is a genuine, this is the best first-person action MMO you've ever played. That statement. Sure. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, and then finally, I'm still playing some MTG with the wife uh, card-based. Uh, I know that they released a new expansion, I think, on, um, I think they released Jumpstart uh, uh, Modern Masters 2, I think, on Arena. I'm not entirely certain, but whatever. They had a magic stream. Talked about this with Martin uh, last week, but there was, a, there was a magic stream that took place. A lot of really cool expansions that are coming out. Just really excited. And uh, I, I, I feel like I need to learn Commander. Sure. Because I have plenty of decks. So I also bought um Secret Layer did a, a matchup with The Walking Dead. Yeah. And I think I have a uh commander okay. in that pack. Oh. That but they only they don't give you a hundred cards. They no, give they give you, you like three or four, right? Well, yeah, I, I got I maybe have maybe ten. Okay. Some of them being tokens too, so like not sure. even real cards. But yeah. Um It'd be cool to build a Walking Dead themed. It'd be f- Commander. Yes, deck. yes, Will. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Um, I'm also gonna say this. Uh, Will's gonna plug the Discord later on in the show, but I just want to hit on this real quick. I added new channels to the Discord, uh, so I added some trading card game channels, and I also added some sports channels. NFL season's about to start. Uh, we're, we're watching F1 Martin's in there. Yeah. Justin's in there. Yeah. We need an F1 channel. For I did. Sure. Perfect. I, yep. Added that, um, added NHL. So you, Justin, Martin, everybody can talk about NHL when I'm just a scrub and doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Um, added MLB for anybody that cares about baseball, but, but I don't know who, um, but it's there in case you want it. And if there's any other channels you guys want, let me know, but there you go. I just added those. So feel free to do whatever you want. Cool. Beautiful. Cool. Um, yeah, that's that's why I played. Will, time for some shout outs. First and foremost, shout out to everyone who joined in the community play date. So from heavy rainfall, because I'm unable to participate in community play dates due to school, uh, from heavy rainfall, he's providing me weekly play date updates. So play date had Hero Spartan, just Josh, and Shot. Play date last night was traditional Russian roulette matchmaking, 4v4 and FFA near the end. Spiced it up and played Jackbox after we got bored of MCC. Silo showed up. Just switched to Jackbox. We played it about until 2 a.m. Central Standard Time. That's fucking awesome. Uh, and that's your weekly play date update. Beautiful. Thank you, Dave. I said fuck you earlier, but I take that back. Thank you. <laughs> Davey Wavy, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. We had a lot. Holy shit. Um, we had Baja Pant. Thank you for the follow. Snagalicious with the primer. Thank you so much. Beth with the 16th month resub. Christina with the follow. Rage more nerd with the gifted sub to Maddie rums, uh, Lank Sasquatch with the gifted sub to Natana. It's because yeah, homesick with the follow Natana with the gifted sub to Mark owns your face, but not my face. Paul, she with the uh, two month resub voodoo man with the raid and caveman with the follow. Thank you all so fucking much. That's awesome. Thank Seriously. You. you guys are fucking rad. Um, Next up, congratulations to Adam Apicella and David Walshy Walsh on joining the Lifetime Achievement in Esports class of 2021 for the Esports Awards. That's fucking cool. Congratulations to Sims and his wife on 10 years of marriage. Congratulations. And uh, I, I don't know how you put up with Sims. I don't get it, <laughs> you know. But your kid is damn cute. Your kid is damn cute. Um, and then finally... Happy belated birthday to Tapping Buttons and Brian, a.k.a. Rage More Nerd. Happy birthday, gents. Hope it was a great one. That's it for the shout It's time for the community creations. Halo memes every day. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Halo memes. You know where to go. They're there. Check them out. Clips of the week number 120 by High Tech Redneck. Go check out that YouTube video. It's in the Google Talk of the show. It's a show. 
And then the last one I have, SWAT Nation website refreshes by SWAT Nation. We've we've been hard at work revamping the whole SWAT Nation website. Make sure to check it out and let us know what you think. There's also a new members page, and if you already signed up before, you'll have to sign up again. Sorry. So there's that. <laughs> Will. Yeah. That's all I got for the plugs. We're about almost at the two and a half hour mark. Therefore, yeah. without further ado, would you mind plugging the show? Find us on your favorite podcast services just for each other. Potok on iTunes, Google Play, Potok, and Stitcher as well. Pocket Cast! Join the Discord. Josh, I had a channel. Be there. Channels. Yeah. Yeah. Lots Multiple. of them. I also moved some channels around. Yeah. I, I was looking for the uh, the um, IRL one. I'm like, oh, it's up there now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one thing. So I'm like, well, I'll put it at the top. <laughs> Easier to find. You know what I mean? Awesome. Find us on social media. Twins. Twinster, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> just combine those two. Twinster, I Twinster. like it. Twinster, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, check us out on uh, YouTube or Twitch. We're live streaming. If you couldn't tell by all the comments we make in talking to a live chat on the podcast, we are live streaming this as well. Go check out our website, hsportalk.com. Find a link to uh, our merch. Not uh, Maddie's. But not, yeah. And don't forget about the fine folks over at Podcast Evolve. Halopodcast.com, your home for Halo. It is. Get your lore, missions, books, blocks, and top Halo news stories from Halopodcast.com. And also know that uh, there will be an upcoming segment of Map Legends coming uh, soonish. And if you guys listen to the Podcast Evolve show, and if you don't, you absolutely fucking should, uh, we'll have our latest segment of Inside HCS for the month of August. Um, that should be next week. Is what I'm is what I'm thinking. As long as we get things recorded properly, so stay tuned for those. Fucking exciting. Yeah, uh, Lanky, you're not gonna get us. I'm not gonna. I was not gonna, gonna get us yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. We talk about nuts for a while though. <laughs> Twenty four hour stream coming up. <laughs> oh my god, I love that emote. What is? I can't even see it. It's the, it's the, you seen that YouTube video or that meme or whatever? Oh yeah. 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 Oh it's my great. God. It's great. Um, Will audience. Oh man. That just reminded me of like, uh, was it Toby? Right. Toby. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. The YouTuber always wore a green shirt. I don't know. He always he always said audience. Mm. Toby Games? I don't know. I really don't. Toby Turner. That's it. No idea. Tob- Tobuscus. No idea. He was under some hot shit too, but that's besides the point. I just remember him calling his viewers audience. So that's just what it reminded me of. That's that's how old I am. Um. Yeah, Will, viewers. Listeners, consumers of content. This has been episode 198 of HCS Pro Talk. I want to thank you very much for listening, for watching, for tuning in live if you're here. To all the new followers, subs, everybody, thank you so much for the support. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I'm going to leave you with this. Like I said earlier, episode 200 is going to be a very special one. I can't fucking wait. Guys, that's going to do it for us. We'll be back next week for episode 199. But until then, have a great night.